Hoping in Leroy, ready to deploy. Had to hit her with a little journalism, but that was a decoy. Better ask about me, boy. Okay, Leroy and Tobin, host of the show, man. Still silly songs for the show, and till then it's half moon open. Sometimes gold takes like a snowman. No proof, I'm a liar about a molding. No proof. Like I always oh, wanted him, wow. I never hated him, I never traded him, and I never ever traded him. What? What is in store? Like under the seat of the driver's side floor. It's cool, he's galore. So many more. Six in the Mars, never a bar. Man, I'm from my house, the damage is done. Still, it's all on unlimited funds. Join us on Twitch for unlimited fun. Chief Figure Marcos, you with it or what? Toby Tobin, give <laughs> two sh who Tobin is. Ah, oh, thanks, Low Dog, and welcome on in. Tobin and Leroy here with you. I'm from the uh, Tobin Garage to say, Lil Tobe's not feeling so good. So, uh, I'm letting her stay home from school today. Sorry She's to hear the, that, man. The, the fever. So, you know, trying to get her to rest up and feel better. Daddy daycare. Daddy daycare today. So, yeah, we uh, come to you live from the Tobin household. Leroy Horde back in the Horde household. I'll be back tomorrow, though. I'll be back, Marcos. All right. Uh, I see you crying. Don't, don't yes. be so upset. <laughs> Pretty lonely over hey, here. I'm Pretty sorry, lonely. man. Don't be so hey. upset. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Supercenter. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. All right. Last night, LeBron James became the NBA's all-time leading scorer. Did it with a flair for the dramatic right there at the end of the third quarter. Did a shout out to LeBron doing it for the East Coast, uh, the East Coast crowd getting it done before midnight yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> and uh yeah, you know, that's uh that's great. He's the all-time leading scorer. Props. You, you know what's was crazy about how people look at LeBron is people don't realize that people got tired of Jordan too. People were actively rooting for Jordan to lose against Utah. Of course. And and that's just the nature of it. People got tired of Tom Brady. Hate right, tired tired of him winning, but that's kind of what greatness is. You can't shake him. Always there, and and so like just enjoy it, man. Just just look. We've been blessed, or I have, that I have been alive with Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods. With uh, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, we're talking about. I saw the record getting broken uh, in '84, right? Just so many things. You're talking about San Francisco, the Steelers. You're talking about the Cowboys in the '90s. You're talking about all these great things that we've witnessed in sports. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. It, there's, there's no need to pick a side. Why there's are you no looking need. at me like that? I, I'm because giving him you, props. Because you didn't gonna... do anything. I just said props. Listen, listen little Skip. You're no, that's, not do that that's not you're, fair. That's not fair. I'm going to stop you from doing that. But you know, that's why you got the smirk on your face. I don't have a smirk. I watched last night. I enjoyed the show. That's all I did. I don't think that's a fair show. Hey, 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 hey. I thought it was Marcos. a door. Marcos, does he have that smirk? I don't does have that have, smirk. He has that smirk. I swear to God, I don't. Wait, he has that smirk like he has, smirk like like he has something is. in the holster. I don't have anything oh, in my holster. I got the know. goosies last night. I, I was so you. happy for LeBron. I know you, yeah. you know, oh, D Wade. Wait, here, here he goes. D oh, Wade was. Do we have to have the whole family. No, it's there. not. No, You're I thought that was actually one of my favorite parts. I loved when he went to. He was mic'd up. I love when he went to his kids. He goes, "Should I go do it?" And he did it. Like he did it. Like in, in that car. I thought that was one of my favorite parts. You know, I don't know if you guys know this. There was a teammate there that he had. You wouldn't know this by the Nike commercial that they aired right after he did it. His name is Dwayne Wade. He played uh, with LeBron James on the Miami Heat. Now again, America wouldn't know this. Because Nike basically washed it out of the history of LeBron James yesterday. I mean, it was eradicated. Not even a mention yesterday of the Miami Heat. 
Marcos again. We Marcos. act like it never Marcos. happened. Marcos. More championships <laughs> with this franchise than any other franchise. His first championship. And once again, history erases. Do we get to just eradicate? Should he go back to the drawing board? Because should the Miami years not count? Should should Kareem? Should he? I think Kareem should say, "Hey, should uh, should we take those years away?" I'm just wondering. You let me know. And we're back. No, 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 no. <laughs> Props to LeBron. The only difference just... between the only difference between you and Skip Bayless, you took a different angle. No, 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 no. no. I, I just want to know, like. Should we take those four years away? I just, if we're going to act like they shouldn't happen, maybe LeBron's got four more years of scoring to do. I don't know. You tell me. Wow, dude. Acting like they didn't even exist. Whitewashed it away. No Miami years. Like it didn't even happen. D Wade had a worse seat than Shannon Sharp yesterday. Good to know where our priorities are at. Bron, Bron. Trying to, could you imagine sitting Dwayne Wade next to Richard Jefferson? Richard Jefferson next to Dwayne Wade? Are you kidding me? So, you think there should have been a seating chart like at a wedding? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, those tickets were probably hard to come by, right? He's Dwayne Wade, oh, plus, he got man. a shoulder rub from Jeannie Buss. That was kind of weird. I don't think Gabrielle Union would like that very much. <laughs> It was a little weird. <laughs> it was very, she very, listen, she's very touchy feely. I mean, she did listen. She was engaged to Phil Jackson. That had to be quite the uh, experience. Mm. Talk about the OG ayahuasca. <laughs> oh. Oh. Anyway, congrats to LeBron. Uh, I, I, LeBron are, you, are, you, are you really going to congratulate him? Because she just spent the first five minutes. I just wanted to know, like one of your former teams, the Miami Heat, who were not in your Nike commercial, they tweeted out, Congrats, LeBron. What a time. What an accomplishment. Proud of you. Hashtag scoring king. Again, that's from the Miami Heat, the team you have more championships with than any <laughs> other franchise that you played with. Even though, for some reason, we acted like you played for the LA Lakers in your entire career I'm in that call, commercial. I'm going to call you BS. Leroy, did you see the commercial? Baby Skip. Did you see the commercial? No. Oh, dude. It's... It's insulting. Quite frankly, it's Ooh. insulting. To who? To, to, to Miami. You, Once you, again. Wait, question, question. Wiped away. Question, because the way you do this, you think LeBron had anything to do with that? With his Nike commercial? Of course. Yeah. Yes. Really? What? Really? He's like the... What are you, are you are you serious? You don't think LeBron approved? So you think every... he said? So you you think that LeBron said don't include the Miami Heat, don't include Lebr D Wade? No D Wade. There was like a little, like a a millisecond of D Wade, a millisecond. Oh my goodness, dude! I can't, I can't. Not, I'm not doing this today. I'm Why? Not, like I'm not. I, I I I gave him props. No, you did. <laughs> Oh my goodness, dude! Why, when you give somebody props, they're bent over because you just kicked them in the junk? That's not props. That's not props, props, dude. I enjoyed <laughs> watching the dude, show last night. You went in for the hug and you need him. Marcos, did you see the commercial? Yeah, maybe a millisecond. There, like wait, barely, wait, wait, wait. wasn't even in a Heat jersey either. It was like wearing the championship shirt in the locker room. Like yeah. a not one lob from D Wade to LeBron, not one. So, one of the most iconic dude, photos. He had, dude, he had time. he had more Patrick Beverly in that commercial than he had Dwayne Wade. Oh my goodness! What also, couldn't do it in a win, LeBron. Jesus, oh, I didn't even want it. That, that seems easy. I don't even want to go that route. Oh, oh my! But goodness. a celebration so, of his so, history. And I got warmed up for this. I got warmed up for this, right? Because I went on Twitter, and Skip was at it, too. Oh, well, what did he say? Oh, my goodness. Dude, hold on. This is, this is incredible. You ready? This is right after the scoring title. 
LeBron has played 338 more games than Michael Jordan did. Yet MJ won 10 scoring titles to LeBron James won. MJ, three, three uh, steals titles to LeBron zero. MJ, defensive player of the year and nine-time first team all D to LeBron's five. MJ, five to four in MVPs. MJ, six and zero in finals, six MVPs. MJ averaged eight assists in 89. MJ free throws, 80% to LeBron James, 74. MJ, runaway go. I read this. Mm -hmm. I took it all in. Yep. I replied. My reply. Only Skip would take a truly incredible sports moment and ruin it. Why can't we just enjoy greatness and not compare it? This is a record that most deemed unreachable. LeBron is great. MJ is great. I enjoyed their greatness. That's it. Texter writes in. Leroy, come on, bro. You know he had something to do with that. If he includes oh, D-Wade, then he has to include the Heat. All right. Okay. There, there we go. So... Why does LeBron try yeah, so, and scrub so the heat make, from his memory? So can I, I don't like question? that bleep. Can I, can I ask you a question? Hmm? We just had a conversation yesterday about Kyrie. Yep. We have conversations about all the things that people do in sports. Mm -hmm. What has LeBron done wrong? What What is he? Maybe he's done some things that you don't like. But mm -hmm. but from a, from a, a man. And a great athlete. What why is has he truly done wrong? Why are you changing are the debate? Because you're nitpicking. I'm not nitpicking. This is the oh, thing that. Oh, really? This is the okay. thing that. You you don't think it's nitpicking? I am yeah, a Miami. Say, oh, D Wade was only in a commercial for a millisecond. Leroy, I am a Miami Heat oh, fan. God. This is one of the most famous teams of all time. Correct. And it is acted upon by Nike and LeBron Inc. like it never happened, which oh. is stupid. The only reason you going back to Cleveland meant anything was because you came to Miami because you couldn't win titles by yourself in Cleveland. And somehow the Miami Heat are looked upon as some blight on his resume. I don't know. what. No, no, no. Before you jump in, you've had your time. I want to know why is it treated like some black eye on his career when it was the best he ever played basketball? I want to know that. It is the that. best he has played. He was the best player, but he's been the best player ever, maybe ever. But the best, the best player ever played were his four years in Miami. And I want to know why he, his shoe company, and the media treats it like it was a blip on the radar rather than the biggest thing in sports. Okay. If, I want to know. If, 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 if I may. Go ahead. I love the way people say this about LeBron that he needed help to win a championship. He did. Who didn't? Name a guy that won a championship by himself. I'm not at, that's not no, the no, argument. No, no. Not the it. argument. It's not the argument. It's not the argument. It's not the argument. It isn't because the, the the facts of it is Leroy are he couldn't win in Cleveland by himself so he came to Miami. Why? Cuz they were a better organization and could actually put talent around him. Yeah. Okay? So why does he act like it doesn't happen? Why? Uh, all right. Why? All right. I give I, I, I absolutely give. The, this this is what this I knew at some way in some way shape or form this is what this conversation was going to turn into. I We're do. not just going to acknowledge. I that did. Acknowledge there's, a, there's a there's a there's a. I told you I got the gooseies. No, he, that doesn't sound like the gooseies. Well, sound like you got kicked in the nuts. The That's what it sounds like. The commercial aired right after the uh, the celebration, and then I got I was I was I was thrown into a so rage. You had two second goosies. <laughs> well, the gooses they come and go, and then I was sent into a. a I, I was like, wait a minute, oh, I had to watch. Dude, I'm, Leroy, gonna I'm you, telling I'm you, I want to give you, I want to give you a five finger goose I, have right seen, now. Have you seen the commercial? Go watch the commercial. No. I beg you, please. Right. You'll note it. It is so noticeable how Miami is not in his Nike commercial. Right. It's odd. It's odd. Right. All right. Great player. Oh. Great guy. Great player, great guy. Oh my but I don't know what it is. The, 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 but you you just like 
All right. What? All right. They're, 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 you're just not. You, I, don't, I, I can't even explain it, Skip. I can't. I don't like you calling me Skip. We're not arguing. Really? Skip I don't think that's a fair shot. It's a fair shot. It's not a fair shot. I'm not. I, I, I see. We're arguing two different things. You are. You, you're thinking that I'm trying to, or like, knock down his accomplishments. I'm not. I'm act. I'm asking him. I'm genuine. I would love to ask LeBron. Why don't you put more of a shine on your accomplishments in Miami? I want to know. It's weird. It's weird. Okay. Text writes in, he's right, Leroy. Hate to say it. He doesn't even like to say it. He doesn't like to agree with me. Oh, this man. texter says I'm right, and he hates to say it. <laughs> Another guy says, I just watched the LeBron commercial. Hashtag King Petty. <sighs> so you're accusing, you're, wait, let me get this straight. You're accusing LeBron of doing the same thing you're doing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Although he'll be back next year. He's going to come back. <laughs> wait. So you're... I've never been more convinced he's coming wait, back to the Miami Heat. Wait. What? No, wait. Yep. Wait. The, the, the Pope of Petty hmm? is complaining about somebody being Petty. That's right. All right. I just watched I just watched the commercial. Leroy, you got to watch the commercial. You got to watch the commercial, Leroy. Okay, li I just counted. Literally, it is a 60 second commercial. Of those 60 seconds, half a, a second is Miami. A, a literal three seconds of Miami Heat. It's crazy. We, we have 23 LeBron James and six LeBron James from the Lakers. How long has it been? He's won How won. long has it been? And by the way, never missed more games than any other team than the Lakers. It's true. A lot of Cavs stuff too. The the same Cavs team. You would he think abandoned. he's Magic Johnson watching that commercial. Yeah. Like it's it's it, like with how much Lakers is in there. Like the idea that he would treat. And by the way, he, we got to get. He is and, in L.A. Wait, so so here's the thing. What if he did all that stuff with the Heat? Then the Lakers fans would be upset. They don't no, like him. Just make they don't even like him. The room. They the don't room. even like him. <laughs> they don't even like him. They love Kobe. They don't love LeBron like that. Uh, I would have given. This should be the breakdown. 15 to the Heat, 15 to the Lakers, and uh, 20 seconds to Cleveland because he had two stints there. A few extra time. But four seconds, three seconds of the entire video? I don't know. I didn't see the, the thing, so I thought you were kind of being a little dramatic, Tobin. <laughs> this is... Oh, so you I, lied before. <laughs> I, no, I saw the game. I didn't see the commercial. <laughs> no. I, I, want you, I want you to watch the commercial. This is your homework in the, in the, in the break. I we want you to watch, watch that commercial. And He's I want you, too. I'm going to send it to you. Okay. I want you to watch the commercial and then you can judge whether Tobin is wrong or right. Because we also you have to get to this. You say you're wrong. <laughs> well, see, say if I, I can see where you're coming from. Can you see if you give me a window? A guy who's more petty than anybody. See if my doesn't petty. Doesn't need much of a window. I'm telling you, dude, I went into you last night. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, I went into last night just trying to celebrate basketball. Look. I did. <laughs> Marcos I had is so upset he's hydrating. <laughs> what? I'm heated. You gotta see him because he's smart, man. Everything he does oh, is deliberate. Man. Everything he does. Everything he does. Okay. So there's everything there he does. And, and which is, so, by the way, and, which by the way is me giving him props. I know he's a smart guy. Savvy. He's a killer. You are. Why? Can I ask you a question? Why, when you say you're giving LeBron credit? I don't feel that you're giving LeBron credit. It's always, you know, he gives, here's what he does. Marcos, you ready? This is the epitome of no disrespect, LeBron. Right? Because everything you say, you should start off with no disrespect. Great record. But the video afterwards, <laughs> and that's what you do. You, you, you always start. I always know. When you give somebody way too much praise, buckle up, folks. Put your chin strap on and your mouthpiece in. Here it comes. And guess what? You have never failed. Never. You've never just left it at a compliment. I know, depending on who you compliment, that immediately after, buckle up for safety, folks, because here it comes. You have Take not failed yet. Take a break. 
We'll have Leroy watch the Nike commercial. And then we got to get to this Anthony Davis just not celebrating LeBron. I mean, that was weird last night. Back after this.
Uh, yeah, yeah, cause girls is players too. Keep it playing, baby. All right, welcome back. Tobin Leroy here with you on 560 WQAM. <clears throat> Take you up until 2 o'clock. Skip Schumacher, Marlon Skipper, Marlon's manager. Skip name Skip. He's going to join us in the 11 o'clock hour today. We'll talk to him, see what it's like managing the big man in charge. Uh, first time talking to him. We talked to Jeff Conine yesterday. Enjoyed that. And uh, obviously, starting off today's show, talking about LeBron James becoming the NBA's all-time leading scorer last night. Your Heat back in action tonight against the Indiana Pacers. And uh, big injury list for tonight. No Kyle Lowry, no Victor Oladipo, uh, no Jovic, no Dunks, no uh, big yurt yet. But it looks like Orlando Robinson is going to try and play through that thumb injury. So we'll get into some of that uh, coming on up. Leroy, did you watch the commercial during the break? I did. And? I just watched the commercial. I wasn't really looking for who was in it and who wasn't. And if I did look at it that way, it would be a sign of pettiness. Right? Like, I just watched the commercial. I didn't watch it for any thing other well, than what I, it was. I specifically asked you to watch the commercial and notice how little Miami was I know in the commercial. I did. I, Which is like two to three times, by the way, in mm, very quick again, photos. Again, mm -hmm. again, I watched it two or three times. The first time I just watched it. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. The second time, then I looked for heat stuff. Didn't see any. But can I, can I, how long has LeBron been playing basketball? 20 years. How many years did he play at Miami? Four. Okay. Sam Amati has been playing for the Lakers, by the way. Wouldn't okay. know it based on that commercial. Okay. More championships here. That's Ten. not, that, I'm not here. LeBron can do no wrong. In the that's West. not, that's not true. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that there aren't things he probably could have done differently. But I'm saying if you look at sports and look at how he's done things, right, to complain about anything he's done is nitpicking on a guy's career who really hasn't done anything wrong. Think about this. LeBron has never asked for a trade and never left the team before his contract was up, ever. Okay. Like, that that says a lot going in, you know, for a career, the way basketball and sports is today. Just that. You know what I'm saying? You, you might not like the way he's handled some stuff. People still don't like the decision. That's fine. I get that. But here's the weird thing about this. Like, I get what you're I, – I'm not disagreeing that LeBron – you know, it, as as a guy, has handled himself pretty damn good. It's not really the argument here. Like, I, I'm just saying, like, how do you, how, as a guy who has been doing media down here for a very long time, mm -hmm. how do you not find it noticeable that one of the things because that when that, I, I'm going to tell when, you why, because when I watched the commercial, I didn't watch it out of petty, so I didn't. Neither even, did I. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, here's the thing. Neither did I the first time I watched it. I was like, wait a minute. What, what was that? I, like immediate my re I was telling you, I enjoyed last night in the moment. I'm like, man, that was cool. He's there with his kids. D Wade. Once again, if people don't know who he is, he's LeBron James, best teammate. Uh, just so everybody, he played with him on the Miami heat. Um, but when I watched that commercial, I was like, did, did I, I, my immediate reaction was, did, were the heat in this commercial? Like what? What's going on there? Like, what? What? I, I, my immediate reaction was, "What was that?" And and I just find it, I find it weird that this man is his longevity, his accomplishments, all of these things should be celebrated. It's awesome. Why is the thing that was most famous has the most championships? Why is it act like? Why is it treated like some little footnote on his career? When it garnered more coverage than anything else, it's weird. Can can I ask you a question? As long as we've been doing this show, have I ever been petty like that? Eli Apple. No, he's bad. There's a difference. Nope. You, he you is bad. Right. And and he trashed he trashed my city. Well, he started that. 
Okay. But no matter what star, have I ever been petty like that? Sorry, I, I know it's late, but he did box you in on that one, dude. You are pretty no. petty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Also, don't you see this as some no, no, kind no. of crash in that, Miami? Wait, wait, wait. That Eli Apple thing started when he trashed New you Orleans. Didn't, hey, you didn't ask me, was yeah. there any, has there any great athlete that I've ever been petty against? You asked, has there been any athlete? He does yes, get a paycheck and, to play football. And, and, so. And, and, I didn't know you were the caveat kid. Like you, well, asked, you asked, not a caveat. ask a different trash. question. <laughs> he, trashed question. he trashed my city and I deemed it to be go time. Yeah, I mean, look, LeBron broke poor little Tobin's heart and disrespected Heat Nation. So that's why he's yeah. petty. Okay. All right. I feel like I have a good balance of petty and also acknowledging greatness. Yeah. I do. You, you do. I do. You do. I do. He might be the greatest basketball player of all time. I'll hear you. I'm not going to dismiss that. Look, no matter how petty Tobin is, Anthony Davis yesterday, dude. Wow. That? that was weird, dude. Did that? you see this video, Leroy? Jesus. Did you see it, Leroy? He didn't even, he didn't even hardly. He, he, like, didn't do anything. He just sat like a bump on a log. Like, he on the block or something? Can you play this video of street clothes yesterday? Uh, this is him. So this is while the record is about to be broken. He's like trudging along, sits his ass down on the bench, and LeBron is now going up for the shot right here, and everybody is celebrating, the entire building, and Anthony Davis is just like, no sells it, like nothing. Weird. What is that? Uh... R.B.A. Richie says he didn't want to pull a muscle. <laughs> I mean, he did look like he was walking like Frankenstein already. Yeah, yeah. But you think he's locked into the game. You think maybe he's trying to like win the game? You think it's one of those moments? I think it's harder to celebrate something like that when you view a guy as your equal or your contemporary. Really, you think Anthony Davis looks at LeBron as his equal? I think Anthony Davis thinks that he is a star. Yeah. All right. Well, you might want to. He might want to recalibrate. I didn't there. say he was. I didn't say he was accurate in his assessment. <laughs> I mean, we see it all the time in sports. Guys think they were on the same level as somebody else, and we shake our heads and go, "Dude, you're not." By the way, he also uh, stunk up the joint yesterday, and they lost. That, yeah, that that might have something to do with it too. Maybe. Why but would I mean, you it, celebrate I, your friend like that? It was yeah, it's very strange. Like, even I LeBron, like even LeBron, like had a moment mic'd up, and he goes, "I love you, man. I love you." Like he's. You know, Anthony Davis was like, yeah, all right. You know, it was like, I mean, very, very weird. It, very it weird. Is, it is, but but like, why are we looking at everything else other than what happened? Oh, it's just uh, well, like, I, it's I, not, observations. It, They're observations. It, it, but it's all right. I guess I'm looking at that scoring record differently than you guys are. No, I don't think you are. I I, think I, it, I know for a fact. When they talk about records that are not that were not reachable, that was one of them. But this is the thing that I find strange. Like I don't understand. We, I'm agreeing with you. Why would his teammate react? Why are we like arguing that? then? If you are, we agree. Because well, because you just want to argue. Like that's the no. thing. Oh, it, it is like you, to you're, fair, you're, you're you saying, started you're everything saying, before the show even started, Leroy. Yeah, that's true. You said I'm. You you I said I'm. I'm all. warming up for you. Did you not? No, I exactly what I, I was. I was. I was, did I was we not start nitpicking. I wasn't nitpicking. Not? I wasn't nitpicking. It's a. It's a. It's a. I do a show. In, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I I do a show in Miami, and I'm going to talk for my people. All right. I'm going to talk for. I'm going to talk for Heat Nation. I'm going to speak for them when nobody else will speak. Okay. Second of all, I am agreeing with you in the moment. That's a great moment. Why is his star teammate reacting like that in what should be a Goosey's filled moment? Why is he acting like his puppy just got taken away? <laughs> That's weird, dude. Yeah, I was listen- I was watching Jalen Rose before the show. He goes, "That's a- and like Jalen Rose is not a guy who calls people out." He goes, "That's a horrible look for Anthony Davis." Right. I don't know what that is. What is that? Right. All right. Well, what is it? I think LeBron was shopping him, and he knows. 
Wow. Hmm. LeBron was like, "Eh, this guy doesn't even play. Get him out of here." Did you guys and like the, the uh, Did you guys like the photo of Thomas Bryant in the post calling for the ball while LeBron's <laughs> making the shot? <laughs> <laughs> Now, now there's a guy who's not aware of the moment. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure LeBron could have uh, broken that record a lot faster if Russell Westbrook didn't keep taking the basketball from him. <laughs> yeah. Or throwing it, uh, rolling it on the ground. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They had a million turnovers. Uh, All right, 15 minutes of heat. We'll get into uh, your favorite oh, basketball we'll team. More LeBron. No, I mean, look, dude. I, I mean, I, I'm. I got. We got. We got. We got business to take care of. All right. Pacers are in town tonight. Got he got to start racking up some wins after a, a pretty poor road trip. So we'll get to that coming up next. Lowry. <laughs>
for help celebrating 85 years of service to our community. Then, now, forever. Broward Health. All right, 15 minutes of here for you on 560 WQAM. Hey, rock legends Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper are coming to the I Think Financial Amphitheater in August. The Freaks on Parade Tour for your chance to win tickets. Enter online now at WQAM.com. Those tickets courtesy of Live Nation. Been talking a lot about LeBron James becoming the NBA's all-time leading scorer last night. Uh, how do you think Kareem uh, liked that, LeBron? Uh, uh, Leroy, do you think LeBron uh, and Kareem, you think like he put on a good face? He hasn't always, they always have, haven't always had the greatest relationship. Been frosty think, at times. I think, you know, you just have to, it's one of those moments where you just acknowledge <laughs> greatness, imagine, acknowledge what has been done, and you set all of your personal feelings aside because everybody's watching. And so what he feels or how he feels about LeBron you know, took a break. Yeah, that, what was that it's about? like it's like when two coaches hate each other and they talk trash before the game and then after the game they shake hands. Kind of yeah. that thing. I don't know what he thinks about LeBron. I don't know how he feels about LeBron. Um, but I know that that moment was probably bigger than both of them. And so you just go head on and play along. You think anybody's going to touch that record ever again? Like, I'm trying to think, like, anybody – Who's even got a chance? Like Luca is like Luca the only guy in the league right now who even has a shot. Luca's not playing twenty years. Too 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 much of the Euro body. Yeah, he's gonna break down by thirty five. I think I think part of part of what has enabled LeBron to get that record is the fact that the guy gets a lot of easy buckets because nobody's getting in front of him. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the Shaq thing. Freight train. Shaq can score 50 if he wanted to. But he didn't take care of his body. Yep. And LeBron is built very similar to that in the things that he does with that body type leads a lot of people to just get the hell out of his way. I mean, the only thing that you would say is like it's it's got to be somebody who's a good shooter. And and they and they have to start playing by the time they're 19. People talk about, you know, LeBron had the three-point shot. You don't realize when LeBron got into the league, he couldn't shoot. Yeah, LeBron. No, and, LeBron. And, and, and so kudos to him for developing his game to fit the style of basketball that's being played right now. No, that's silly. Just like people who are uh, looking at that say, oh, yeah, the three-point shot. Like, yeah, okay. So he developed know, it. Guess yeah. what? Kareem, Kareem was also outlawed because of how tall he was. Like, you know, like that's – that's that's that guy's greatness too like he had some advantage kareem abdul jabbar had some advantages everybody like it's it's okay and, and you know what that's what makes them great that's what makes them special right. i will say this i don't care how great lebron is he'll end up having forty thousand points which is unheard of mm -hmm. there is no shot that's more unstoppable than the skyhook none and I can't think of anything in sports that was more unstoppable than the Kareem Skyhook. I'm happy he didn't do the sky. There was some theories that he was practicing yeah. it before the game. It did look like at one point he was kind of looking for it. I'm happy it just kind of happened naturally with a, with a fadeaway. With a, shot, a fadeaway. Yeah. From somewhere ridiculous on the floor. Bam out of bio's reaction to it last night. Tough. With a 100 emoji. Short and to the point from Bam. I, I just, you know, I just think that we should just probably enjoy it. And and you can still have your feelings about LeBron and what he does and doesn't do. But that moment, right? Like, for example, what do we think about Barry Bonds? I think he's the best player I've ever seen. Right. Right. That, and, and And there's people that would argue that. Um, he's the greatest hitter I've ever seen. And and there's people that will argue that because of the various things surrounding him. But you can't just unsee that. You can't unsee what you saw with Barry Bonds. Victor Oladipo, he tweeted, wow, first Beyonce, now LeBron. Hashtag living legends. 
goat goat crown crown emoji. See, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see. I look at, and here's the funny thing about it: we're comparing LeBron and Jordan, and they're two different players, right? It's like they, you know, it's like you can't compare Kareem and Jordan, even though Kareem was the all-time scoring leader at the time. You couldn't compare him to Jordan. Well, it was interesting, like Pat Riley saying that the other day to ESPN, that he's always considered Kareem the greatest because Kareem really doesn't get his flowers in that talk ever. No, no. Like nobody, nobody ever, I, you know, I feel like even Magic gets more respect in that stuff. And, and I think it's probably because, you know, Kareem, a lot like Barry Bonds, was kind of surly, didn't have time for the media. And the times, keep favors. in mind, when he, when he times, started playing yeah. basketball with all the, you know, he was more of a, he was a, an activist also. And sometimes just having a a a, for, a forum outside of sports and using that for social injustice at that time rub people the wrong way. And then when you look at Jordan, I mean, Jordan came in at the perfect time because right now, Jordan will never go away, right, because of his shoes. And because no. of Jordan Brand, he's around forever. And Jordan has affected many more generations of sports fans and basketball fans than the likes of Kareem. And, and LeBron is getting some of that. But Jordan, even now, well, Jordan's, Jordan's brand is bigger than LeBron's. Jalen Waddle, he tweeted yesterday, GOAT debate. Over. No. Not a debate to Jalen Waddle. Yeah, I can why see did, that. Why it's do you look group. at Marcos? Age group. Age. Just look at demographics, and and you can see people that grew up with LeBron that never yeah. really saw Jordan. We it's were tall. lucky; we got to see both of them. Good for us. I mean, good for us. I mean, you know, everything I saw was kind of just wiped away, though, yesterday. You know, you wouldn't know what uh, you wouldn't know like it ever <laughs> happened. Huh? Saying, like, you never <laughs> saying. Uh The Heat, they're back in action tonight against the Pacers. 7.30 tip-off tonight from Miami-Dade Arena. What, what is the, what is the uh, trade fodder out there? What do we got? Nothing too sexy on these streets right now, dude. Crickets? It's pretty quiet. It's pretty quiet. Which means you ah. Uh, too quiet. Oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Too quiet. I like that. Too quiet. Uh, Too quiet. The big thing is Kyle Lowry's out. I mean, he's going to be out for the next three games with his knee. Will he be on the heat after? He'll, he'll play after on tomorrow. He'll play on Friday. He will. Well, for somebody, you, you think all of a sudden it's going to be healthy? He's like, oh, trade deadline's over. Good to go, everybody. Boy, how do you how you know they're not sitting him out? Uh, I don't know that. Right. It could I'm be just, mutual. Could be I'm mutual. just saying, on Friday, if he mysteriously plays after the tread deadline, is it going to be safe to say, uh, uh, I'm just, just putting two and two together, you know, just, maybe. you know, thinking out loud. Yeah. If you guys missed it yesterday, the only move so far is Dwayne Dedman. He was, uh, <laughs> he was not... shipped off to San Antonio <laughs> with a second round pick. <laughs> the uh, the Heat they uh, did I believe uh, sign Jamari Bouye from the Sioux Falls Sky Force to the uh, oh, uh, to attend the deal. What's happening? Dealing and dealing, baby. Because of Bouye? Yeah, yeah, dude. There you go. Well, ten day contract. Wheeling and dealing at the deadline. <laughs> I just like his name because Bouye is a cool name when you dunk. Yeah, for sure. I can see Eric Reed using that. He, uh, I remember they, uh, uh, during the summer league, they went booyah, booyah, little nod to Stuart Scott. Oh, yeah. So we'll see what's going on there. But when we come back, our Tua, get to a little bit of a uh, Dolphin, some Super Bowl talk as we are a couple days away from the big game. Back after this. Listen to WQAM for.
It's our two why. It's our two why. It's our two why. Two why. Two why. Two why. Tongue of I low Not to a tag of your. A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Chris Sims can go to hell. Tua Tonga Baloa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Check the history of food. <laughs> Uh, word to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Tobin and Leroy are with you on 560 WQAM. Going to talk to Marlins manager Skip Schumacher later on this hour as the Marlins getting ready for a little spring training. We'll be out there on February 21st. Boots on the ground. I'll be boots on the ground tonight at the Heat game, but we'll be boots on the ground in Jupiter coming up in a couple of weeks. Looking are we gonna to be? Are we gonna be? Is that now Kim Ang's office? I don't know where we're gonna be. I don't know. I don't know. I will. Uh, I'm not sure where they're gonna position us. All I ask for is, uh, please, uh, you know, let there be internet. That's all. But uh, I don't know. Or please let there be ballpark snacks. Yes. Oh. Oh. I knew you were going there. Oh. 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 No, Popcorn. Ooh. Hot dogs. So we got that coming up in a couple of weeks. Let's get some headlines here brought to you by a new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. There you go. Leroy with his Palmetto Ford props. Raptor. Beautiful. Is it like Raptor? Red one. Raptor. Love a Raptor, dude. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are worried about Patrick Mahomes and if he is remembered what to get for Valentine's day, uh, he better be because apparently he is not on top of that. Here is Patrick Mahomes at a Super Bowl media day. I didn't even notice it was, it was coming up. So don't tell her I said that, but, uh, we, I'll make sure I have some plans now. And I think it's, it, I don't know when it is. Uh, I know it's February 14th. I just don't know what day of the week. <laughs> I don't know what day of the week. But uh, it's uh, yeah, I'll make sure to make plans now. I appreciate you reminding me. Wow, you know what he could give her a Super Bowl championship. He could do that. He could do that. Wow, that's I don't... man. You know what? I got a bit of a dilemma. What's that? Ooh, Super Bowl is on Rebecca's birthday. Oh, Ooh. Valentine's Day is the next day. Is it? Is it? I think it's Tuesday. No, it's not. Yeah, it's wait. two days after. So the wait, wait, wait. It's on the twelfth. Yeah, Sunday the twelfth. Okay, 12th, so, Tuesday so the... no, let me let me correct that. Yes. Monday is Rebecca's birthday, the thirteenth. Oh, okay. okay. We're all good then. Tuesday. I almost had to cancel Valentine's her birthday. Day. Tuesday and then is somebody Valentine's a... Day, and then mm. Fonz's birthday is on. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday. This is, this, this week's always a gauntlet yes. for you. That's always oh, a gauntlet. Man. Yeah. Was it like this last year? I don't remember that. Or was it his birthday? Now you, I vaguely remember Fonz's birthday. You Didn't we cut a are, cake for your right, daughter? All right. Yeah. Give me this all right. moment. All right. You just asked me. Yep. Was it the same way last year? Yep, 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 yep. Birthdays fall on the same damn day, and so does what? Valentine's. So I'm going to go ahead on and go out on a limb and say yes. Yes. Not the Super Bowl, though. Is the Super Bowl always the same time? No. I feel like that fluctuates. No. There's a new week every year. Like, <laughs> they move the Pro Bowl, Leroy. Like, Typically, the Super Bowl like, is the second week in February now. Like, yeah, yeah, sure. He it just is. said, he just no said proof. To me, hey, is it the same way like that? Is it like that yeah. every year? Well, no. what about next year? <laughs> Minus one. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Maybe this Minus year your birthday one. won't be in August. Maybe. Maybe I'll get some respect around here, man. Did you guys see, uh, <laughs> speaking of a uh, person who won't be dealing with Valentine's Day, you see this Aaron Rodgers? He's going on a dark, darkest yeah. retreat. Sure. If you're cheap, just say that, Aaron Rodgers. Who are you He's not trying to buy a gift for? Dude? First yeah. of all, how long, here, here, how long can any of us sit in the cabin 
in the dark by ourselves? Hi? No. <laughs> <laughs> because he's doing drugs. Like, why? No, is he said he's not doing ayahuasca. Dude, hold on. It says he's sitting in isolation, meditation, dealing with thoughts. It stimulates DMT. So there can be some hallucinations in there, but it's kind of just sitting in silence. This dude's going to get high in the dark. So, my, like, but, but how long? Like, can I just tell you? Like, I can barely sit in an MRI machine without starting counting spots on the ceiling. Four days? Four days, dude. Four days? He says, dude, that, is he single? Uh, I don't know. Could you imagine telling your wife? No, yeah, he's not married. Hey, I know that. Yeah. He's not married. Hey, 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 Big Spoon. I'm going to go on a ayahuasca retreat by myself. She'd be like, stop lying, and when you get back, I won't be here. Rogers told the Pat McAfee, so there's, the retreat will be alone in the confines of a small house in an undisclosed location. He said meals are delivered, but otherwise there is no other contact with the outside world. However, he said he could leave at any point during the stay if he chooses to. So uh, that means that me personally, it would be like a 12-minute stay. Because I'll be sitting in there in the dark. And then I look at my clock and realize it's 915. I gotta get there. Are you allowed? Are you allowed to have a clock? Like, is he even allowed to have a clock? Obviously, I would He's imagine have a clock. He gotta know when he gotta take out. He does it like you do weather. He just looks at the sun. He's like, uh 4 30. In the He's darkness, in the Marcos. Oh, he's in the darkness. That's right. Damn it. What is he doing then? I have no clue. He's meditating, dude. dude. He's got to meditate. He's somewhere with Uber Eats. Could you though, imagine being the teammate of this guy? What do you got to meditate for? <laughs> this is it's the worst, dude. This you know what I meditate? I meditate already. every day. I meditate when I go to the bathroom and I sit and I bring my phone <laughs> in there. And okay. you know what I think? <sighs> what am I going to eat for dinner? Let's be real about it, though. Uh, like. This guy's got a like. It, it's gonna be like a JJ Watt situation, right? This is gonna be the nicest dark house there is. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Like, dude, <laughs> this dude was staying in the woods, and 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 his cabin had an elevator. He he's not going to some shanty. Like he's not going Glamping. to something. Yeah, he's glamping. He's glamping, J Fig. I don't picture him lighting a candle before he goes to bed at night. Wow. I don't know why you did that, and I thought about a triangle also. Do you like think you like at one triangle? You're like, oh, like when you tell the kids to come in and eat supper. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no triangle. Do you think at one point, like in this spirit quest, like a dolphin starts talking to him? He goes, Tree to the dolphins. Eat, eat, eat. No. I would imagine if he's on in enough the stuff, then the, the trees will start talking and moving all kinds of stuff. I'd be scared as hell in the woods by myself. I ain't going to lie. Cause you know, some go move. Some go move. You can you be like, what? <laughs> what was that? I just want to know, like, but who monitors this? Like, he's going to cheat. Like, is it going to be a house that has no electricity? Darkness retreat. Come on, dude. Really? Cabin? How you going? Wait, 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 wait. First of all, I'm going to go with reason one why it's BS. If food is delivered, there has to be electricity. Because has to be how they gonna know when to deliver it, what time? Somebody gotta mm. watch. Wait, how long is this retreat? Four days. Four days. Four days. Or, or um, until until meal he prep. has he meal preps. Until meal he prep. has a, a meal prep. No, they say he said food's delivered. Food's delivered. Oh, they Just, said that. I'm sorry. Um, that's then they probably have a specific time for it, and that's it. Yeah, I come every day at two p.m. Whether or not I'm here, I answer. Just drop. That's that how he keeps track PM. of time. Man. Why is he paying to be in like solitary confinement? Just go in the woods. This, just do that. Do that survival thing where all, just the go to prison, get, dude. all the people get ate up by bugs. I don't do understand that. it. Just I don't go. Understand. Just go naked and afraid on the ass. Mm. Just there. Yeah, there you go. Boop. We gonna drop you off by parachute just into take a the nice woods. Nice hike in the woods, and you're good. And then, and then you let us know. Here's the drop zone. Here's the pickup zone. You just make it over there in four days. In there. Strange thing, man. All right. Really, uh, how long can how long can how long could any of us 
I think a day. In the woods by herself. You could go a day. I don't think oh. you could do a day. In the woods, just by myself. By yourself oh, he, in the dark. Be in a cabin, though. I don't no, think I could do that. If, like if, if I get to see daylight at certain points, that'd be fine. I could last a couple of days. With no people, no nothing, yeah. no kids, no wife, no. Well, yeah, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a perfect a story. It's always loud. People yelling. Dogs are barking. And a few years ago, my, my wife and kids took a trip to Canada. They were going to be gone for 10 days. So I got up, took them to the airport, went golfing, got home. I'm like, yeah, this is great. Some alone time. I sat there for about 20 minutes. And I'm like, damn, it's quiet. That was day one. There ain't no way I can sit in the house by myself. With nothing, not even TV. I can't even catch up on Netflix. Nothing. Nothing, dude. Yeah, nothing. No way. No way. That's I figured that's a waste of time to catch up on Netflix. I no feel like sure. I he's not doing drugs. Oh no, he's doing drugs. <laughs> he's doing drugs. And hey, wait, did we like poor Josh Gordon? He kicked out of the league because drugs, and 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 Aaron Rodgers could just go on a, a spirit quest, ayahuasca, and, and do fancy weed. Apparently so, dude. He just gave it. He just gave it a different name. Like, does him and a bunch of people like sitting around, and you know, and they hitting the pipe? Like, uh, what's that called? Um, where they do the uh, the in, in is it Indian? The, Talking uh, about the uh, the opium dens? No, but what is it called? But the uh, they oh, have I these thought... bars. Hookah. Oh, hookah bars. Hookah, hookah yeah, bars. Yeah, yeah. So he just sitting around. I thought you were said, talking about. I thought you were talking about in Vikings Valhalla, where he gets high to see his uh, his dead girlfriend. Remember that? Uh, spoiler alert, right. dude. Spoiler Jeez. alert. Yeah, I didn't say who. Okay. Okay. Anyway, our more shenanigans coming up after this. What?
right. Welcome back. Tobin and Leroy here with you on 560 WQAM. Skip Schumacher, Marlins manager. He's going to join us later on this hour. We'll talk to the new Marlins manager. Spring training is upon us. Marlins uh, getting Fan Fest underway this weekend. I saw yesterday, Leroy, the, uh, the tickets go on sale for UFC 287 on, I think, the 17th, I think is the date. Mm -hmm. So uh, people can get their tickets to uh, the UFC pay-per-view. First time in 20 years it has been in Dade County. So uh, getting ready for that. That should be exciting. Happy birthday, by the way. You know his birthday is today, Leroy? Who? Alonzo Morning. Zo, wow. Mr. Mr. Hilarious. That's right. That's right, dude. Great Ooh. sense of humor. Reminded me. I got two more days, three more days, my dad's birthday. Oh, you got a lot yeah. of stuff coming up, man. The same. This is a busy week for you, dude. I know. Got to get rid of one of them. Huh? Got to get rid of one of them. You can't say that, dude. My dad's old. Oh, not Whoa. your dad. <laughs> one of the kids. You got two. <laughs> What is uh, wrong with you? What is wrong with you today? Like yeah, today, we, you're on something else. Are you that? We're not there. I think, I think you're more shook by the LeBron commercial than I am even today, Marcos. Like, what's what going happened on with you? when you I'm okay? alone? No one's here. You guys were all here yesterday. Now it's just me and the Celsius. Lame little tobes, dude. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Zoe turns 53 today, by the way. So, think you can give us 15 minutes tonight? No. Yes. Just, just a little bit. A little bit I can't, you know what? I didn't, I didn't, I thought Zoe was older than me. Well, you actually like knock knock jokes, so I think that keeps you younger. Or I do a show with you and he does it. I don't think Alonzo and I could do a show together. <laughs> he would <laughs> could you imagine the first time I tried a whale sound next to Alonzo morning? <laughs> Does the words assault and battery charges come to I mind? I don't feel like that's going to go well for me, dude. I don't feel like that's going to work out for me. Hey, can we get a weather update from the Nesbitt and Dover law firm? Here's, yeah. where do we, here's where do we go. Zo, Zo, hear me out. <laughs> as soon as hear me gets, it's a punch right in the face. Oh. <sighs> Uh, let's get a weather update from the Domesman and Dover Law Firm, your accidentattorneys.com. Well Free consultations 24 7. Call them at 866 954 more. Leroy heading over to the window plex. All right. Woo. Mostly cloudy. We got a breeze of about 10 to 15 miles an hour. Mm. Yeah, it looks a little brisk out there. Look like it might be gusting a little bit higher than that at times. Um, it's actually cool even though it it doesn't seem that way so i'd say it's probably 75 80 degrees all right all right how do you do marcos cloudy like he said wind at 11 miles per hour 77 degrees he's a golfer dude he's a golfer no, I'm he's telling a golfer you, I, like i go i don't i don't, can't explain it. You, it when there's a difference between wearing shorts and pants or a jacket or a sweater or short sleeves or long sleeves, you go out and check, and you are very familiar with the weather. Very, uh, very accurate in all of that stuff. So there you go. Uh, by the way, did you see that Derek Carr is apparently going to go visit your uh, New Orleans? Yeah, I saw fans? that. Does that tickle your fancy at all? I, I, um, he's better than anything they have. I mean, yeah. My and, fancy and, is And tickled. so from, from that standpoint, it's not, I think it's not sustainable. Like, how many years you can get out of Derek Carr? What is he in his early thirties? Uh, yeah, I don't think he's that old. Let me see. Derek Carr, he feels like a thirty-one ski. Thirty-one, boom. So yeah, you can get a contract out of him. So I take it back. It, it probably help a lot. Um, they have some weapons and some talent. Uh, yeah, it could work. It could work. I mean. Someone's gonna give him a. Someone's gonna kick the tires on Derek Carr. He's thrown to, for too Absolutely. many yards. Too many Absolutely. yards. But but here's the deal. If you're the Jets, when you kick those tires, also because you're a lot closer than the Saints. Feels like they're going. It feels like Aaron Rodgers the way they're going. Right? Like doesn't all the tea leaves feel like Jets are can going I, Aaron Rodgers? I, can I just and 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 I don't know how I would. Aaron Rodgers is in the same category as Kyrie. 
in that great players, but you don't know what you're getting, right? You don't you don't know if you're getting that greatness. He might get up and say, you know what? I've decided to go on another retreat during camp, right? It just seems like it has that feel to it. And so when you're a team, a young team like the Jets, how is that going to play? You know, because we all tend to look at sports and say, I don't care. This guy's great. He can help my team win. But at what cost? At what cost is Aaron Rodgers coming in with the way he's done things? How is that going to affect your team? Not only for this year, and you know that crash is coming. Not only this year, but future years. Like that's, I always worry about that. And I don't have that feel. I know Derek Carr is not as good as Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but he's Adams young, that this year. He's younger. And you have a better idea of what you're getting into. It feels like Derek Carr is going to go very much the route of like Ryan Tannehill, where he'll go somewhere, almost have to prove it. And then maybe he has some success and he gets another contract like that probably feels the direction it's going to go or maybe like a two year deal. It doesn't feel like right. gonna, no one's going to invest in him long term. Uh, the thing I'd say with Aaron Rodgers is like, I don't feel like he's going to go on an ayahuasca tour during the season. I feel like if he goes somewhere new, you know. I think it'll be okay. I, I think I, it may be. See, you're looking at it this way. And and I, I I don't, I can't say you're wrong. But there's nothing that I've seen out of Aaron Rodgers that say it's true. And that is, he goes to a new team. He gets reinvigorated, refocused, rededicated to being the quarterback that won back-to-back -back MVPs. Yeah. I never. Every time I hear him talk, you don't get that feeling at all. No, nah, and, and we're talking about fifty million a year. But he also feels like a very compartmentalized person. Like he's going to use his off season for his off season. He's not Tom Brady. He's not. Yeah, yeah but he's but not. No, he's not dude, using it all to lube up. Now maybe at like thirty eight no years old. No quarterback is like that though, man. Every quarterback has to get in and work with their guys. I get you. I get you. You know, if he if he's uh, if Garrett Wilson's calling him up and he goes, "Hey, uh, Aaron, you think we could uh, you know run some routes?" and he goes, "Oh, sorry, G, can't be there, man. Listen, I'm uh, right he's now. In. I'm in a pyramid. You know, where I'm gonna see if I can take some uh, DMT and meet the Pharaoh. You know, the spirits. Hey, no, he's gonna be. You know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of the dad from Meet the Fockers. <laughs> right? That's who Aaron Rodgers is. That's what he reminds me of. Like he's wearing some kind of cloth pants with sandals. Like a kimono? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I like gonna... and, and he's done this to me. <laughs> I didn't just all of a sudden make this up. I, I would have taken Aaron Rodgers at any point in his career. He's gonna he's gonna take Brees Hall and Gary Wilson. He goes, We're gonna run routes in our mind. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, we're going to talk to uh, Skip Schumacher, Marlins manager. He is scheduled to hop on with us next.
All right, welcome back, you rascals. Tobin and Leroy here with you on 560 WQAM. Take you up till 2 o'clock. Got the Heat back in action tonight. I'll be boots on the ground at the arena. Taking on the Pacers. A lot of injuries. You know, we'll see what's uh, what's up with that. Uh, we are expected to speak to Skip Schumacher this segment. Uh, Marlins manager. Skip, name Skip. Skip, name Skip, dude. So he should be uh, hopping on with us. Been uh, talking a lot today about LeBron James passing the uh, the all time scoring mark as he passed Kareem Abdul Jabbar yesterday, and uh, you know did it with that fadeaway. Thomas Bryant was calling for the basketball. <laughs> wait, he had the mismatch. We thought, wait, we talk about we talk about Anthony Davis being unaware. What about the guys on the court with him? Oh, Anthony Davis. <laughs> Anthony Davis looked like he was aware. He just wasn't having fun. I don't know what's. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, it's hard to celebrate when you play bad. I guess it's just hard, man. Like I, I don't, I don't know. And here's the weird thing: we never know what these relationships are with these players, right? Even though they play well together, mm-hmm. right? I mean, case in point. I mean, we all remember the story of. Uh, Michael Jordan knocking out uh, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr. Yeah. I mean, when they win two championships together, that is true. Like, <laughs> like, let's not make it sound like every great player. I mean, think about it. You know who would have more championships than anybody if they could get along? Kobe and Shaq. Yep. So, like, yeah, man, it it. It's I just think it, well, I know. I just think it's I, I the the thing that's interesting about it is like LeBron is literally on the bench talking about how much he loves Anthony Davis. Like they 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 appear to have a good personal relationship. That's yeah. why this video is so strange that he yeah. didn't seem to be enjoying the moment when everybody like, else would be. I would I would say this. I would it's hard to live your life every moment of it thinking. Oh, I got to do the right thing because this is what it's going to look like if I don't. Right? I don't think we could, any of us could do that. And sometimes you get caught in those moments where it is. It's you, tough because you don't right. know. Like there's a camera everywhere these days. Like right. Like literally everybody had their camera out and they're right. trying to film. Like one guy wanted. He goes, you know what? Instead of the record, I'm just going to get Anthony Davis being a mope which, over here. Which, by the way, is that saying more about that guy? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that guy. That guy didn't want the picture of LeBron. He wanted to see what AD was doing. Everybody had their picture. There's actually, it's a funny photo that they, uh, one of the photos is like, everybody has their camera out. The only guy in the crowd who doesn't is Phil Knight. Everybody else has their camera out for right. it. But that's a souvenir to everybody. Like, it's cool. Like, right. if you're going to go to a game, like, that's, there's not How tickets. How much do you think any- that ticket is going to be worth in 20 well, years? But here's the thing. There's not tickets anymore. Tickets are all on your phone. What do you do? Save a screenshot? You know, it's not like oh, that's true. Like I have, a, I still have in my attic. I still have my like, my World Series tickets from. That makes from me sad, though. I, f- I like having tickets. I like collecting. I do tickets. too. I do too. But yeah, they but, don't have but, them anymore. But here's why they don't. They don't have them because people, uh, make them up. Counterfeiters. Counterfeiters. Remember they had that thing with the Super Bowl. Was what's that tickets to? I don't know. Oh, Miami Heat. Miami Heat. Miami Heat. Miami Heat. I, I am I it's am open. a big I don't even how about this? I'm not that big on zelling. Really. I don't like doing I anything do that's it. electronic to be honest. I I listen, if I owe you twenty dollars, I You're want cash. It cash on hand. Wow. But, right. but guess what? That's why I'm not a big fan of crypto. Oh <laughs> it's imaginary money. Remember when they uh, looked like this? Uh, what is that? Can you do remember that? What is that? The ticket. That's a heat. That's, that's those tickets. are the heat. Like the uh, but like, look how small they were compared to these. Man. I have. I actually a little have, cheap. You know what? It, I man. do have a ticket up. I have a a ticket in about ten programs of the first Marlins game. I have a 
I have that up here. I did have it up here. I don't have it here anymore. I got rid of it. And I saved today. I saved my ticket from the last Browns game. That's cool. Um and I got my helmet signed by everybody. I took it with me. By the way, Skip Schumacher is uh, pushed back a few minutes. He's going to do noon. So we'll talk to the mall skipper in just uh, in uh, in that amount of time. But yeah, like I, if you're, but if you're going to that game, like that's that's a souvenir these days. A souvenir is the video. Like, that. but my, but but and another thing is, is that all of the things that I've saved, really, really, dates so. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, first of all. Point for Twitcher. Let me say this. Dude, we ate together, Dade South. <laughs> and, and, and this is what I know. Yo ass ain't petite. Okay? So don't be talking about Leroy Zave Deli tickets. Uh, huh. But the only things, the only things that I save are things that I could look at and I have a memory. Like I don't need, you, you know, to, to have, you know, like in my in my room, I only have pictures of two people. And one is Gail Sayers. I have an autographed picture of Gail Sayers, who, you know, everybody knows how I feel about that dude, and Jason Duffner. When he won the PGA Championship. That's it. Are Dates we staring out. at the pacing? Is that what's going on here? What is he pacing dude, again? He, he's he's always stressed. Any, days. Wait, so stressed. Any man that paces that much should be in the light heavyweight division. He's just he's out of the help. He's got to know. He was kind of stressing me out. I had to walk he's away. He's got to know that that's on camera. I got to have a talk with him and be like, hey, I just like, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with him pacing yeah. there. Right. He just needs to know he's being broadcast to thousands of people. Like a lot of people think he's stressed, dude. Oh, <laughs> he looks very worried. stressed. He's yeah. stressing me out. I don't even know what he's worried about. Jeez. Exactly. After the show, I was just like, I can't be here. So like I just walked away. <laughs> uh day uh SDI says he says, uh, watch the game with your eyes. There are a hundred million pictures of LeBron making the shot. Yeah, but not yours. Like that's that's technology. That's today, man. Like you gotta you, I, you know, like I saw the side by side, it's like of Everybody has their camera out, and Michael Jordan. I don't know what the shot was he was making. Maybe it was the game winner for something. And nobody, I was like, yeah, but nobody has cameras back then. Like, what do you? Right. Nobody has the technology. I remember right. back. I remember the 03 game. It was Roger Clemens' last game. Uh, what we thought was going to be Roger Clemens' last game. He he pulled a far. Nah, he retired like two more times. Jesus. But what we thought was going to be Roger Clemens' last game, game four against the Marlins, dude. The flash bulbs that were going off. For what was going to be maybe his last, Luis Castillo had no chance, no chance to hit a, bat, a baseball with all those flash bulbs going off. I think we, uh, yeah, I think, and and the way we are in sports is like you don't really know when that. There's only a handful of moments, like you don't really know, like even when, say, um, who's um, the Denver quarterback when John Elway retired. I mean, we didn't know until after the fact that was his last game. We knew it was Peyton Manning's last game, but what picture were you going to take? Because he couldn't throw it. I guess just walking off the field. I don't know. Right. Like I'm, I'm more of a, I'm more of a person that I like enjoying the moments or whatever. I have a rando ticket. You ready? I have a ticket when the Cleveland Indians played. The I want to say it's the Oakland A's, and the ball bounced off of uh, what's it called? It's head. Conseco. Conseco, and I said, you know, you have a ticket for that game? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just That's rando, funny. rando tickets in the box. I have a ticket for a playoff game that we won in Cleveland. I have, um, you know, just crazy tickets. I saved the tickets for. Um, like the when um, the Saints won the Super Bowl, I have three tickets. Yeah, I gave I, tickets away, and I said, "You only get this ticket. I will only give you this ticket if you bring it back to me." Yeah, if I don't. You know don't what, bring it back to me, then you got to buy the ticket. I don't know what. Uh, I don't know what you do anymore for that, I, other than fill with your phone. Because like you can take a screenshot, I guess, print it if you wanted to. Not the same, because anybody could just do that on the internet. 
Yeah, well, listen, you got the uh, the Roy Halladay perfect game. You could just buy it for three ninety nine from the Marlins back in the day. That that's one of the. That was one. There's of the there's three mo- there's three moments in mo- Marlins history, right? There's selling tickets that were unsold to a perfect game. Yep. Of the other team. Yep. Muhammad Ali. Yep. And having a dome in it raining. Oh, man, I thought you were going to go running out of hot dogs on opening day. <laughs> no, no, no. That's way – wait. It's way worse than having a roof that closes and it raining. Totally fair. Right. Like, I can deal without a hot dog. There's other food. We call right? that the uh, we call that the David Sampson Grand Slam. That's like him hitting for the cycle. <laughs> right, right, right. Running out of hot dogs, selling tickets to, uh, to people who didn't go to the game, <laughs> Muhammad Ali – and uh, your your stadium that you got with a roof, you had a rain delay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, you know, all the city of Miami should have said, "Give us our money back." Did yeah. you, no. We're gonna need we're gonna need a little bit something for this. Right. We're gonna need something for this. Counter. Just yeah. Um. Yeah, man. But look, it was a cool moment yesterday for sure. Um. And it was I, I, like it was cool seeing it with the kids, like telling telling his kids he was gonna do it. His son even had the video. I think his son called the move while uh, before he did it. That's you know what it's just cool that the relationship he has with his kids, and I hope he gets a chance to play. It'll be the first like since um, the Griffies, right? Which was which I thought at the time was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. Yeah, no, like, it would be super cool. Right. It would be super. Maybe that's why the Heat are holding on to picks because they got to save one for Bronny for the reunion. Maybe. You, what are you doing? What? You think LeBron's coming back here? I don't know, dude. It was something no uh chance. something no frosty chance. with that Anthony Davis stuff yesterday. No chance. Something for not you can't say no chance. He went back to yeah. Cleveland. Yes, I can. Why? Huh? Why would you say no chance? Likes it in LA. What if his son doesn't play for LA? Come on. Well, what? Come on. What if they don't? What if he doesn't? Okay. We'll take a quick break. Uh, Marlins manager Skip Schumacher, he's scheduled to join us. we got some cat talk coming on up. Plenty to get to here on the program. we got rats off a ship next hour as well. Back after this.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you on 560 WQAM. Very excited. We're going to talk to Marlins manager Skip Schumacher here in just a minute. Give you some quick headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Uh, Marlins, the, uh, the Heat, they're back in action tonight. They're taking on the Pacers. Tip off set for 7.30, 6.15. Your coverage gets going here tonight on WQAM with preheat. No Kyle Lowry, no Big Yurt, no Victor Oladipo. They are all out with injury. Orlando Robinson and Gabe Vincent, they are probable to play with their injuries. LeBron James became the NBA's all-time leading scorer last night. So those are your uh, big headlines out there. But let's head out to the Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop over 1,500 Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. He is the new manager of your Miami Marlins who – have their fan fest coming up on Saturday at Lone Depot Park. So go check that out. We talked to Jeff Cohen on yesterday. He's got some big announcements. He wouldn't tell us, Leroy. He wouldn't crack yesterday with his big announcement. You know, I was I was disappointed that we yeah. couldn't get that out of Mr. Mo- yeah, I thought we could I thought we could crack him. I thought we could crack him. But I mean, he said to- he didn't know. He didn't know. Yeah, he knows. He knows. Uh Skip <laughs> Schumacher joining us here on the show. Uh Skip, thanks so much for the time. Do you know Jeff Conine's big announcement, Skip? Uh, can we get it out of you? I have an idea what it's about, but you're not going to get it out of me either. <laughs> that, that, that's fan fest, uh, coming out. Of, well, uh, Skips, first of all, congratulations on on getting the job this off season. And uh, it, like, were did you, when you get went to this process, were you nervous? Did you think you had a chance this was going to be the the cycle? You're very young, uh, one of the youngest managers in baseball. Like, did you think like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it this time around? I'm definitely going to nail a manager job. You know, you really have no idea what's going to happen in these interviews. Um, I've had a couple of them before in the last few uh, seasons, 2019, 20, and 21. Um, but you don't know how they're going to go. And the other ones, I think, really prepared me for this one. And to be honest with you, I'm, I don't know if I would have been ready for the other managerial positions because I was a first base coach when I got those interviews. And I needed to be in that bench coach position to see and really navigate a game and understand how the game is run from this side. And um, I'm glad I got that seat before uh, before I got this job. Now, Skip, this is a, a old person's job. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> I'm so used to seeing, you know, managers so much older. How, with you being a lot younger, is this going to kind of help this team? Because there's a lot of young players and a lot of guys that need to learn – you know, basically how to play the game and what needs to go into it. Well, I think it's it's all about relationships. I think, you know, Brian Snicker's not young and he's uh, he's a really good manager, right? right. Um, and then you have Ollie Marmel, who I uh, was a bench coach with last year in St. Louis, who is, I think, the youngest manager in the big mm-hmm. leagues. And we won 90 plus games and, uh, you know, had a really good season with an MVP on our roster. So I think you can uh, win with any aged manager i think it just boils down to the relationships and managing egos and can you do both and um so i think a big part of what i uh in my success as a player and watching you know the managers go through um you know winning seasons and losing seasons one had the relationships one lost the clubhouse and i think uh my focus right away from day one is, is building those relationships and and trying to get the most out of the player every single day so, uh, Skip, how surprised were you that uh, a guy like Jazz Chisholm came to you and suggested his move to center field? Because when we were speaking with Niner yesterday, he said that's not very common. A lot of the times, you know, managers or front office have to go convince players to do that. Um, like, so when that when he broached you with that idea, you know, what like what went through your head when your your young stars coming to you and saying he's going to do something that's you know best for the team? Yeah, it was pretty cool because that was before the Rojas trade. That was before the Arias trade. That was just, hey, if you need me, I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do to help us win. Um, And when you have your best player willing to do anything to help the team win on every every given day, any given day, you're in a really good spot. It makes this seat a lot easier and a less less hot um, because you just you don't have to convince uh, your best guy to do something he's uncomfortable with. Now, playing center field, is it going to be really easy on him right away? I'm not sure. He's an elite athlete. Um, luckily, we have an extended spring training with the WBC going on that we can get you know, really good work in. Um, 
But the, the fact that he had his, his mind wrapped around that already before we even made these trades was huge. And um, it's a credit to Jazz. You know, he's ready to win. He's sick of losing. And, um, and I think he's, uh, he's going to be really good, uh, a really good center fielder and, and hopefully an all-star for years to come. As one of your best players, does that not help how you can approach other guys because you have your best player willing to do whatever it takes? Now you can go to a guy, say a younger guy, and say, hey, why don't you try this out or why don't you try this out? And look, Jazz is doing whatever he can to win. We need everybody to be on that same page. Yeah, I mean, that's really how you start, you know, setting a culture, um, right. right? And, you know, when you have your best player and, and, and Sandy and Jazz doing whatever it takes to win, wants the ball in all nine innings in Sandy, and, and Jazz was willing to play, even though he made an all-star uh, team the year before at second base and would probably do it again um, at second base. He's willing to, to be uncomfortable and for our team uh, to, to help, you know, move the needle. I mean, how could you not love that? And mm -hmm. yes, you're absolutely right. It helps conversations down the road when, hey, listen, you, uh, you know, our best player was willing to move off of his position to help us win some games. Um, I think you can do it too. And by the way, not everybody can do this. Um, right. I do believe that defense is one of the tools, the easier tool to get better at. It just takes makeup and hard work. If you don't have those two genes, it's not going to work out. Not everybody can just move positions. Jazz has that trait. You ask anybody around here, can, is he a worker? This guy works. And so that's why there's no doubt in my mind, wherever Jazz goes, he's going to be lead at. I'm sure you're thrilled you don't have to face him anymore uh, in Sandy Alcantara. You mentioned him. I'm, I'm fascinated by this, Skip. We've seen with Sandy, as you mentioned, he likes to go not all nine innings. And if he's not allowed to, we have seen him with Don Mattingly in the past – let it be known he's not happy about coming out. How do you balance that, man? This guy is a horse. He is one of the best players, and he seems to really hate being taken out of games. Have you already had those talks with him? Do you feel like that's something that's going to come along with the season of, of knowing, hey, when is the right time to, to, to ride a guy like Sandy Alcantara and when is the time to, to say, hey, we don't need you to, to, to carry the load all the way? Like, how, how do you think that relationship is, is uh, going to build throughout this year? Yeah, I think there's a double, a couple of factors that go into that. You know, the what's the score of the game? You know, there's different factors that obviously that uh, you know I'm not going to ride him when it's eight to one, um, and you know trying to get in, he's at a hundred pitches already, and you're you're saving him down the that line. But I will tell you that I want all five pitchers trying to go nine innings. That's the goal, right? To eat up innings to save our bullpen. That is the goal. Quick outs. Um, Sandy's a horse. I want him to be pissed off when I take the ball. I want Lizardo to be pissed off and Rogers to be pissed off and whoever else, Cueto to be pissed off. Um, I played with Johnny Cueto in 2014 and 15. He's not happy coming out of the game either. Great. That's what I want. Um, Wainwright last year, not happy. Miles, Michaelis, not happy. That's the culture you want. You want these guys to be on the mound, the biggest spots. They let them control the game and say, this game is mine. I don't want it to give it. I don't want it to give it to anybody else. However, when I do take the ball and give it to somebody else, now they're the biggest cheerleader for that guy who's on the mound. So I think it's a fine line uh, as far as that's good, but you want that competitor. I want that guy on the mound and, and Sandy, it's going to be tough to take the ball out of his hands at any time. Um, in fact, I remember after that, I think it was in Philly, um, we played them uh, in St. Louis a couple of weeks later and Donnie went out in the ninth inning with guys on first and second in a 4-3 game, and he let him go, and then he got a double play ball uh, to end the game, a complete game in St. Louis. Um, so, listen, you just – you don't know where he's at physically. When, you know, when Donnie did that, um, I had Donnie, great manager. I loved him every, you know, every moment I had with him. But I think you watch the game and you understand the player before you make any moves. Are those some of the moments during, like, the course of a season – where your relationship grows with your players is that you get a good feel of things like that and you make the right decisions as far as when to take them out, when to leave them in, and everybody else either on that staff or on the field says, hey, you know what? This guy this guy's guy knows what he's doing. Um, yeah. yeah, the play. I mean, the, you're – Throughout the season, you start trusting the player more, the player less, right? That's right. just how it works. They earn your trust. Can I trust him three and four times through the lineup? And then you have conversations with your pitching staff, um, your bench coach, and then you watch with your eyes. There's always pregame meetings and like, okay, if Sandy gives us six innings, 
who do we go to? Well, Sandy might take us to seventh and eighth, and then you just watch it and you see how he's throwing the ball and see the crispness of his ball and whoever that is on the mound. Um, so I think you always have a game plan, but the beauty about this game is it's never scripted, right? Very rarely does it go exactly how you think it's going to go in your pregame meetings. I think you're prepared for it to go a certain way, but you always are hopeful that you know they, they exceed your expectations. We're talking to Skip Schumacher, New Marlins manager, Marlins Fan Fest coming up this Saturday at Lone Depot Park. We're looking forward to being out there for spring training in Jupiter coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, Skip, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, so you have a great video of an argument you've gotten into with an umpire as a bench coach when you were with San Diego. It was actually against the Marlins. How much are you looking forward to uh, your first managerial umpire argument? And what is the thing that will set you off the most of these umpires that can be very sensitive? Yeah, you know, that was my first career ejection as a player. <laughs> and two years later, here I am uh, as, the, as the manager for the Marlins. So, uh, you know, honestly, I've known Doug Eddings for a long time. He was the, 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 um, the umpire behind the plate that night. And I, just, I had enough. And I couldn't take it anymore. Um, and I think, um, you know, when you got to defend your players, the players have to know that you have their back. That's number one. As soon as you don't, the players don't feel that you've lost them. And by the way, you've lost them forever, right? It's not just that night. As soon as they sense that you don't have their back, you're done. And um, I can tell you that I will have their back um, at all times. um, Because I always felt that as a player with every single manager I had, um, which is a testament to those guys, starting with Tony La Russa. Um, So I think, um, am I looking forward to it? My family's not looking forward to it, uh, that's for sure. Um, but I know it's going to happen. Um, I'm not going to give you an over or under of like how many times I'm going to get tossed, but I do have a hair trigger, unfortunately. And uh, But I think with all these new rules and everything, it, there, there's a lot less of the ejections than there used to be. Um, so I, I, I don't think it's as many times as a lot of people think. So no stealing a base. Like you're not going to steal a base or maybe throw a rosin <laughs> <throw a Ross laughs> bag like throw, a grenade. Don't throw <laughs> base. I don't know. I don't know if I can lift and they're a lot bigger than they used to be. Like, what, yeah, no, I don't know if I can do that anymore. Now, I, most of the time when managers get kicked or, or get ejected, it's because a player is getting ready to get ejected and they go ahead on and, ta- and, and jump on that hand grenade for them. Uh, that's mostly where that goes, right? It, it's more of protecting your player from him getting ejected, and you go ahead on to take the L4. Yeah, you're trying to save the player. You never want to get, um, you know, I don't want to get Segura kicked. I don't want him out of the game. I'd rather be right. out of the game or my bench coach or my pitching coach out of the game and not Sandy or Segura or Jazz, right? I mean, you're, you're definitely always protecting the player. But, again, that goes back to having their back and jumping in before, you know, stuff hits the fan. And I think that's that's going to be, a, a, you know, a big part of a rookie manager is knowing – that cl- that clubhouse has to know that I have their back and um, and and always going to protect them, you know, at any given time. Uh, how have you uh, been practicing the the first day of spring training speech? How's that going for you? <laughs> um, I, I think you know my twenty plus years of you know listening to speeches given by some Hall of Fame managers. I don't remember too much of them, um, which you know <laughs> which makes me a lot more comfortable because unless you really screw it up. A lot of those guys are just like, all right, get this thing over with. I want to get on the field. Let's start playing some baseball, right? And uh, so I'm not overthinking it. Uh, It's just going to be a couple quick hitters and I'm done. Are you – like, do you – with Skip, being a young manager, but you've crossed eras. Like, you've seen, like, how young players probably consume the game. Like, Jazz is a very active guy on social media. He will uh, let himself – if he is happy about something or upset about something, it'll be out there on social media. How do you think you're going to navigate that? Like the idea of, you know, guys are engaged all the time on their phones and things like that. How have you noticed that that change with players, you know, not to make, you know, not years through the game? Yeah, I think players uh, nowadays um, are trying to build their brand. Right. I mean, I think there's life outside of baseball and that's okay too, um, because you get to let the fans know who you are as a person and you're not just a baseball player. Um, You have it. You're a, you're a human being, you have a personality and, um, you know, if you want to, you know, say some stuff on social media, you have to also understand there's some repercussions. Um, you know, how's that going to affect us as a team? How's it going to affect teammates? Um, you know, personal relationships. So, I um, mean, that's not jazz. That's, that's everybody in the league and, and every sport. Um, so that's the stuff, you know, before you hit send is, is, is it going to affect 
our team, our organization, because you, honestly, you want to eliminate distractions and BS, right? You just don't want to have any distraction. If we're really in it to win every single day, then you have to eliminate the distractions. Um, so I think there's probably some, a lot of these young kids or some learning curve and some growing up um, to do in our gener uh, this new generation. My son's 15 years old. He's on social media. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of like talks of, about social media and what that can do and affect not only your life forever, um, but, you know, to your team and your school and whatever that means. So um, I think as long as it doesn't have it, uh, there's no distractions inside of our clubhouse, you know, I got no issue with it. A couple more before we get you out of here. A couple of quick hitters here. Skip, Skip, Schumacher, New Marlins manager. Get out to Fan Fest this Saturday, guys. Starts at 1 o'clock at Lone Depot Park. They got a lot of fun stuff. Jeff Conine, big announcement. No one will tell us. It's a lot. Skip Schumacher's a lockbox. He won't tell us. <laughs> so it must be something good coming out. Uh, what is the weirdest thing Skip Schumacher has done to get out of a slump? <laughs> I'm not sure if I can say that on here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was very superstitious. Um, I did all kinds of different things. Um, as a player, if you saw my, you know, batting routine, um, that, you know, I had to like do my certain, my batting gloves a certain way and line them up the Velcro exactly, you know, in line, if it was crooked at all, I had to readjust. I don't think that the pace of play right now would not go well with me. Um, I do have a strike called quite often. Um, but I, I do think that, um, some of the pregame, uh, rituals just changed, uh, honestly. And, um, but I, I like as far as like the weirdest, strangest thing I've ever done, um, <laughs> I would have to get gas. If I got a hit and I got gas out, I'd have to stop at 55 or I wouldn't stop the gas if I if I started getting hits. Yeah. So I'd have to go to the gas tank and go, you know, 20, 55, I'd have to stop at 55 and then, and then go to the field. So there's some weird stuff. I, but yeah, I'd do anything for hits. You know what I mean? I mean, it's such a long season. It's understandable. <laughs> I used I used to have stuff like that, but then I put my mouthpiece in and got hit and then forgot about it. <laughs> there you go. And yep. uh what is the uh what is the favored uh dugout snack? What are you what are you tearing through as a game is going on? Are you gum guy, are you a seeds guy? What what is uh what is uh you consuming as the game going up goes on? Coffee. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I love coffee. Um I like just just black coffee, man. Like I just crush it all day long, all night. Um, yeah. And I can go right to bed. It's not a great thing. Um, but I love the taste of it. And yeah, the seeds like make a mess. I'll mix in some gum because my breath starts stinking. Right. Like I don't want my bench coach thinking, you know, starting moving away. Um, but so like gum and coffee are the, like the, the two things that I'll, I'll have during the game. Have you been introduced to the Cuban coffee down here? Have people giving you that rocket fuel yet? Oh, yeah. So I played in Venezuela in winter ball for three months. And then I played for Team USA in Cuba. Um, oh. So uh, I'm very aware of the Cuban coffee. And there's did a you make the mistake that I did? And they give you the little cafecito cup and you're like, no, Phil, give me the big one. What are you doing? Thank God. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a mistake, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, because there is uh, so much sugar in that. You are you are ready to roll. So there's, there's a crashing element to that. Yeah. Too. Uh, so I had to take another one uh, after my first one in like the seventh inning. So it gets you going, but then yeah. you got to keep going. You can't stop. Yeah. Uh, Skip, so th thanks so much for the time. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank Congratulations. You. We're looking forward to spring training and uh, go check out the Marlins this weekend. Fan Fest is Saturday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. A lot of meet and greets, a lot of interactive games, some behind the scenes tours. And, uh, you know, Skip Schumacher sounds like we're in good hands, man. Good luck this year. Yeah, you guys were great. Thanks for having me on. Thanks. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll get you caught up with your headlines, some cat talk coming out. We got rats off a ship and uh, back with more after this.
All right. Welcome back. Tobin and Leroy here with you on 560 WQAM. Thanks again to Skip Schumacher for joining the show. Appreciate him. He really, uh, like, when he said he couldn't tell us what the slump thing was, because obviously, you know, the, the stopping on 55 was cute. That obviously is not the first thing that came to us. Oh, mind. hell no. It, 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 no we the, know. We, we know. knew he was wearing, like, he was wearing, like, uh, he had, like, a thong, thong on. Yeah. A thong, Look, slump he's been, buster or something. He's married and got kids now. Yeah. He don't want to get into it. Yeah. The, the baseball, they love the nude. Okay. Okay, that's just what goes on. And, and like it, it, whether it's Mike Redman hitting batting practice naked, even Jeter came out this week and said he used a gold thong. Like definitely the first thing came into his mind. It was either some kind of underwear, some kind of minor league slump buster. But look, some some are left for the book. Some are some some stories are left for are left for the Skip Schumacher memoir. I like him. It was a very pleasant conversation. I liked him too. Yeah. yeah. You guys are focusing on the wrong thing though. What's that? The Marlins. Are hiring some handsome individuals. You think he's handsome, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Sneaky nice handsome. handsome. <laughs> My God, that guy was a looker. Wow. All right. He ain't got, he ain't got, he ain't got a speck of hair on him. Is he man. the only? Uh, is is he the the only mar- the manager with an arm sleeve tattoo? Is oh. he? Is it he, like we're getting to that? Be, right? We're getting to that age now. It's like yeah. all right. Yeah. You know. Couldn't imagine Jack McKeon rocking that. Like Jack McKeon, if he has a tattoo, it's like probably one of like an anchor up on his sleeve somewhere up here. <laughs> I like it. Because he fought in like World War II or something. So he got like uh, a Marines tattoo or something. You know what I like about Skip too? He talks normally. You yeah. know, like I don't have the Mike McDaniel long. Oh, he's not thinking about every second. Spo too. Well, Spo will hit you with a um. You know what that is, though? I think that has to do with because he's not that far removed from playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he hasn't developed that yet. No. no. Yeah. It's, I mean, like, he's right there. And, you know, <laughs> it had to be interesting. Like, last year, he was the bench coach for St. Louis for Albert Pujols. He played with Albert Pujols on some championship teams. Right. Like, yeah, that's a that's that, that full circle thing. I'm trying so. to think. That happened to me. With Ozzy? Um, I played with Ozzy Newsom. Right, and he got rid of me. I'm like, wow. See, I kind of had to. I said, I had. A, I said, I told him, I kind of had a feeling you had this in the holster there, buddy. Been waiting for this, huh? Waiting for this, huh? Uh, Kyrie Irving is he's making his debut tonight. Yeah, like that's yeah. uh tonight with the Mavericks. I saw yesterday. But Luca's not playing, so you're not gonna get the what? No, yeah, Luca Luka tonight. Luca's been out. Maybe he got the ankle. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Right. No Luca. All yeah. right. Well, that's a bummer. I want to see the see what that well, looks like together. Trade deadlines tomorrow. All we need to know is this from our Heat insider. And I don't know if you're an insider or not, but you're always boots on the ground. So some could accidentally fall your way. Yep. What are the Heat gonna do b- before tomorrow? If you had to make a guess, is Kyle Lowry playing on Friday for the Heat or not? I think he will be playing for the Heat, but not on Friday. I feel like he's going to do this whole I'm hurt thing, but he'll be back next. He'll be back for the Nuggets game. So you say the Heat are going to make no moves? I don't think so, dude. I don't know. Which I don't means, I feel the same way, unfortunately. Wait, which means get ready for a big splash. Wow! Because let me tell you, tell me if I'm wrong. Mm. Every time we've gone into a trade deadline like this, they've made a bunch of moves. Um, I mean, the last secretive about it. The last big one they made was the Igadala Jay Crowder for Justice Winslow. That was like the bat, the last big midseason pickup, and they both turned out to be very important moves for Iggy and and Jay. And Justice basically didn't play for the for the for the Grizz. Remember, yeah, that Grizzlies hat just like handy. I was like, where did he get that Grizzlies hat? Whose team is he? He's still playing, but who is? What, he's on the Blazers. On the Blazers, that's right. He's on the Blazers. I don't know if he's healthy yet. I think he was dealing with that is, ankle thing. How's Precious Precious doing? And they like him in Toronto, right? I don't think he's having that great a year. I mean, Toronto's not having that great a year. That's but, why. That's why everybody's kind of looking at them as the team. Remember, we talked about the Siakam yeah, thing, like part. yeah, that like. Everybody thought they were going to be making this big leap. Remember, they like wouldn't put Scotty Barnes apparently in in trade talks for Kevin Durant. 
He's taking a step back this year. So 10.6 rebounds this year for Precious. That's that's all right. Pinch player. He had a nice little stretch. Didn't he have like 25 rebounds against the Heat this year? That does sound vaguely familiar. I feel like he had like a giant rebounding game against the Heat this year. He runs like, you know who he runs like? Hmm. He runs like Napoleon Dynamite. He doesn't pump his arms. (laughs) He he does. When you watch Precious run, he runs without pumping his arms. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like, uh, I feel like if I, if I, I don't know. I don't feel like I don't feel the vibes of a move, man. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe I. Maybe Riles is, is every cooking. time. Because let me tell you, when they traded for Shaq, did you know it? Did you even sense it? Big surprise. Right, right. I'm telling you, that's how they do it. That's how they do it. But who though, Leroy? Like who? I, dude, I'm telling no. you, Leroy I'm just wants him to you, be above the height of six eleven. I know <laughs> the heat. When nobody thinks they're going to do anything, all hell breaks loose. And, and my lying told me, am I lying? When we talk about trades, they never happen. So, I mean, like, look, they could be laying in the weeds. That's why you always get caught with your foot in your mouth with these trades. Never mm. wanted them. Dodging a bullet. Oh, no, they didn't want them. Dude, dude, don't like them. And next thing you know, that guy's on the team. Because huh. guess what? You assumed it wasn't going to happen. It well, didn't happen. that's not true. What happened was there was a lot of Kyle Lowry noise two seasons ago that he was going to get traded to the Heat in the middle of the year. And then I said after he didn't get traded here, I may have said never wanted him. And then he ended up on the Heat three months later. What about Jimmy Butler? That's not the same. Because I wanted Jimmy Butler right from the Timberwolves. There was a lot of noise around that trade. Remember that we got the whole new I did Sedano report that he told uh <laughs> that he told uh Thibodeau to bleep off or something like that. Um and then he ends up going to Philly because Tom Thibodeau is being greedy. Although it ended up working out because I think they wanted Bam for Jimmy Butler back then. And so we may have dodged a bullet. And then Jimmy Butler goes to Philly, and there was this report about him getting into it with Brett Brown. And I said on a show one time, we may have dodged a bullet. But I didn't know that they were liars in Philadelphia. It takes – Here, let me tell you. There are certain people in sports that you don't get the full picture of who that person is from afar. Right. And, And I tell you this all the time. Until you hear another player say it, I don't care what an organization has to say. Case in point, there has never been a player to say anything bad about Randy Moss. But for some reason, everybody pictured him as a malcontent, as a, 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 a guy that's killing the locker room. And that simply was not true. Yeah, I mean, like, what there were players who didn't seem to vibe with Jimmy. They just happened to be mopes. There were, there were young kids who didn't want to work. That's right. That Like, let's put it out there. So what if your star player holds you accountable? That's what it that's what they're there for. Those oh, yeah. players that you have in your locker room, there's certain guys that are there to make sure that you play a certain way and play the way the organization demands. UD is one of those guys. Of course. Right. So so no. It, it, like I don't I, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. So when people say certain things, now I will give you the other side of that. Is T.O. Everybody, like, yeah, man. Yeah, it's rough. Well, we'll take a quick break. Time to get to our favorite Wednesday game. Tobin off a ship? No, dude, it's called rats off a ship. I'm not a rat. Oh. Rat, rat, rats off a ship. Back after this. To all of
Ah, time to get to our favorite Wednesday game, ladies and gentlemen. Hats off a ship. Rats off a ship. Hey, Rock Legends, Rob, Zombie, and Alice Cooper are coming to the I Think Financial Amphitheater in August. It's the Freaks on Parade Tour. For your chance to win tickets, enter online at WQM.com. Those tickets courtesy of Live Nation. Uh, let us hand it on over to Jay Fig, and she will tell us what topics today are we ratting on. Today we are ratting on anyone catching LeBron James in scoring record. Man. I'm rats off a ship. I don't even think with a three-point shot. I don't know. You'd have to play so long and be so healthy, be built like a Greek god. You know, like, I guess, I mean, scoring is up. Cam Thomas is scoring 40 points a game. I mean, he's on the way. If he keeps this up, he could do it in 10 years. No chance. (laughs) But that, and, and I think that's the thing that goes really unspoken about, like, this guy's averaging 30 points as a 37-year-old. Yeah. That like, come on, come on. Yeah, like come on, it, dude. It's a crazy thing. It's a right? it's a it, it, it seems impossible that anybody's ever it gonna just, catch this guy. Hey, hey, Michael Jordan said he could get out of bed and score 20. LeBron mm-hmm. says he could get out of bed and score 30. It, it, you have to have the right yeah. mix of like, you know, Eyes being and, you his, gotta be a freak of nature. You have you to can't be, a, be a small dude. You have to be a freak. You have to, you know. And, and honestly, one of the things is like his three point shot did get better as his career went on. That's the thing people don't give him credit for. He was not. He was Giannis coming into the league. Yeah, and then he developed you... all the other aspects of his game. The only difference between Giannis and LeBron when they first started was even as a young player. LeBron was more of a facilitator, right? But developing that jump shot and developing that fadeaway and that three-point shot, that's all things he's worked on as his career progressed. His career low was his rookie year. He averaged 21 points a game. As as an 18-year-old. As an 18-year-old. Right, as an 18-year-old. That's not right. (laughs) He's now averaged 30 in back-to-back seasons. I don't know, man. That seems Who does that? Like, that's seems, crazy. Seems impossible. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Rats I'm, off a ship. I'm going to say rats off a ship because I know I won't be alive. <laughs> so I won't know. Maybe if they had a four-point shot one day. I don't Maybe. need to think that because you're only talking about a handful of guys. Here's the, the, the thing. If Steph Curry could play like Steph Curry has the last 10 years, but he was hurt when he came into the league. Yep. And didn't really start playing like that. Keep in mind, Steph Curry's first extension was like, what, four years, 50 million? He wasn't making that big money because he was banged up. I mean, Steph Curry's 34. He's at 21,000 points. Right. At 34. So at age 34. So he's already been in the league, what, 12 years? So he's going to need, so like in four more years. Yeah, I don't think so. Right. It's not. And, and, and keep in mind that anybody who will reach him, so I'm looking at somebody like Giannis, right, who who came into the league and, and was always able to get to the basket and get easy buckets, right? Those are the type of guys that are going to be able to do it to where they can score 30 without shooting the ball. There's yeah. only a handful of guys that can do that. But you also got to be able to play 20-plus years. Yeah, like Dirk got to 31,000, but he looked like a zombie the last two, two, right. three years of his career. Right. Think about how old was 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 um, he when he retired? Dirk? I think 36? he was. Yeah, I think he was. Let's see. Dirk is. Well, he's 44 now, so he would have been 39 when he retired. 39. Right. Jay Fig, what about your rats? My rats are swimming. Yeah. Rats, rats, rats off a ship. I'm going to give you some quick numbers. I know we spent extended time on topic number one, so I'll give it to you quick. 
This is why no one will ever catch LeBron James. First three seasons, the games played 79, 80, and 79. I'm looking at the young scorers, the John ja Morant and Lucas in the league. 67 games played, 63 games, 57 games played for the yeah. first three seasons. If anyone's going to come close, uh, Luca is close in points. But even then, LeBron James, Luca feels like abilities. the Luca, unless Luca gets through, unless Luca turns into like a physical specimen, exactly. His body's just gonna break down. As long as he yep. just gets into, sh- if he gets into serious shape, then maybe, maybe. maybe. But he's yeah. the only guy who feels like he's got a shot who's playing right now. But the other thing is, these guys aren't rim rockers. Like no, LeBron but he can get to the rim. Get to the rim. He's the only guy who's got a shot. Like yeah. if you told me there's one guy in the league, he's the only guy I would pick. Because of age. And, and keep in mind that a lot of these guys coming to the league, they lose a year. That LeBron like, didn't lose. LeBron got 1,600 points before they even got into the league. So right. because he got that one extra year. Yeah, Luka's the only guy I feel like has a shot. And because he came in that young and was that good right away. Not Joker? Nah, I don't think so. Too late. You got to start off late. hot. It's you too late. start off on top. Yeah, kind of Joker thing. was, uh, Joker I was mean, like a second-round pick. I mean, yeah. and, and and to be honest with you, neither did, um, you know, Giannis. Giannis didn't yep, start. Right. right. Correct. And which is, yeah. you know, when you think of like somebody like Kobe, right, who's a prolific scorer, he didn't start. He came right out of high school. He didn't start like LeBron did in his career. It took a couple of two or three years. Uh, What about number two, Jay Fig? Kyrie Irving saying he felt disrespected by Brooklyn. I mean, that's off a ship, dude. Why, like, that's off a ship. Seems to me like it was a mutually disrespectful relationship. I would have to say that. I, I don't think I can sit here and say that you were disrespected by Brooklyn. They did offer you a contract two years ago. You shot it down, didn't play basketball for a year, and then things kind of went awry. I can't sign up for him saying he felt disrespected. I think that the, the lack of respect was p- p- going both ways pretty highly. I would say this. Kyrie is a star. He's an elite basketball player. But to expect with what has happened the last two or three years in Brooklyn, to expect somebody to just give you a three or four year deal worth 40 or 50 million with what has transpired. I think you've been a little disrespectful to them. That being said, everything that he's done is what most professional basketball players or most franchises would do at this moment. He's going to be a free agent, get something for him. If you don't know if you're going to resign him and you move on. That's the deal with Kyrie. He could put whatever twist he wants on it. They have been very clear. They didn't want to get rid of Kyrie, but Kyrie had a set of rules that came in. Oh, you got to extend me. Otherwise, I want out. Okay, bye. Jay Fig? I'm still swimming with this. Come on. Rats rat, rat, rat off a shit. What about you, Marcos? Same. Two athletes, I'm over. Antonio Brown, Kyrie. I just don't want to hear it anymore. Antonio Brown? He had played football over. in like, what are you, <laughs> He's blaming he's James over. Harrison about CTE like two days ago. I'm like, yeah, all right, he's, dude, he, he did what? He blamed yeah. James Harrison for his CTE because he said that he wore an illegal practice helmet. That was like one or two days ago, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah. I think Leroy was either at the doctor or with Cleveland oh, or something. Man. But yeah, we were talking about that with James Harris. He blamed James Harrison for his CTE. It's just, I'm just over it. I don't want to hear from any of them anymore. Didn't they play on the same team? The <laughs> he same said it happened in practice. What was he c- covering him? <laughs> like, what, what is Chase Harris going to be covering Antonio Brown? He didn't go into great detail, Leroy. Yeah, He's exactly. Antonio Brown. For sure. But yeah, rats off a of ship, long story short. Rat, rat, rats off a of ship. J Fig, number three. <laughs> Scooby, number three. <laughs> Scooby, that's the third one. <laughs> Chugging a beer from Cooper Manning's boots. What? Cooper Patrick Manning. Mahomes <laughs> promised to All do right. it if the Chiefs won. Uh, uh, you know, 
I feel like if I got a drink from a boot, it's got to be one of the good Mannings, not Cooper. Cooper, <laughs> rats off a ship on Cooper Manning's boot. If it was Peyton, I would definitely do it. Be like, oh, let's do it, Peyton. Let's party. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, wait, am I the only one that just thinks it's nasty to drink a beer out of anybody's boot? It's it's very Australian. If it's, if it's a famous boot, though, you can tolerate it. So that's it's called bit. a shoey. That's a shoey. Yeah, that's a shoey, essentially. Yeah. If it's a boot, do we call Herbal it a booty? Minus one. Yeah, I already had a red. Had a red. Good. At least you know. A buoy that already exists in the water, by the way. No, a booty, not a buoy. Right, minus She's one. very distracted. Minus hey, one. Yeah, pay attention, J Fig. She's got a. She's got a. Look, a, Scooby saw food, and now he's going nuts. I'm sorry, guys. I'm it's trying. It's a cane dog. <laughs> so I am uh, definitely rats off a ship. I don't care. Not, who not, not it off is. Ship. I'm not celebrating a Super Bowl championship drinking out of nobody's shoe. Oof. No That's thanks. Very disgusting. Very Oof. disgusting. Uh, Marcos, your boot. Rats off a ship. I agree, Leroy. Just give me a cup. Rat, rat, rats off a ship. Scooby, what do you think? You know how much I love boots, guys, but I will not drink anything out of a boot. That's <laughs> gross. Rat, rat, rats, rats off a ship. ship. What's uh, topic number four, J Fig? Philly cheesesteaks at your Super Bowl party. Mm. Reportedly the most searched food before the big game. Yeah, you get that Eagles theme party. You know, you have a Philly cheese. I don't know. I mean, Philly cheese for a party. Rats off a ship. I feel like I have a lot of better options. Let me explain something to you. As a person who has had several of these events. I call them events at the Horde household. Shindigs. You want people to get in line, grab and go. Okay? You can't do that with a Philly cheese. Right? If you cut it in small pieces, the meat falls. Somebody get more meat than the other one. No. You go with ribs, wings, hamburgers, hot dogs, the basic grab and go food items. That you can eat. Anybody who's making a Philly cheese that is not from Philly, you're a damn fool. <laughs> uh, J Fig, what about you? Would you have a Philly cheese at your Super Bowl party? Philly cheese. No, I will have whatever rock, 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 Leroy was serving last year because it was amazing. And furthermore, a big fat zero to anybody if I come over to your house and you have a damn charcuterie board or whatever that is. I'm not over there to snack on cheese, damn it. <laughs> cheese is awesome, though. No. No. I agree, though. Uh, it's an adult cheese. lunchable. You're yelling at me, okay? Yes, yeah, it's an adult <laughs> lunchable. It's just a big old lunchable. It is... Come Marcos, on. don't act like you don't eat Lunchables. I do eat Lunchables, though. Okay. I don't want to. Wait, 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 wait till you have your kids. Wait Especially till you have your the kids tiles. and y'all sharing mm -hmm. food. Yeah, well, I pay the bills around wait, here, right? Wait, as soon as you have a kid, you know what you're going to be known as? The finisher. Because yeah. all the food your kid don't eat, you just going to finish. Solid. Uh, Marcos, Philly cheese, party, rats. <sighs> I'm actually not rats off a of ship because I love Philly cheesesteaks. Let me get sliders. Philly cheesesteak sliders. Oh, just think man. about it. You know, hey, you can just cut go. one into four. Go. Put a toothpick in it. Just put a toothpick in it. You there you go. Leroy hates sliders. He hates Come sliders. Come on. Philly it's cheese It's too sliders. much bread. <laughs> put a toothpick in it. <laughs> it's too much bread. Not, the meat to bread ratio is way off with a slider. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I eat a garlic rolls. That's a lot of bread. That's only bread. I don't like I'm garlic fine with rolls. It. Garlic knots, garlic twists, garlic rolls. You don't like no. garlic knots? Yeah. What? What are you, a vampire? No. You, 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 fangs up, Leroy. Don't they have, I have garlic fangs for knots? A reason. The knots? You've seen them, right? Yeah. Okay. Twisted. Yeah. Pretty good. That is Rats Off a Ship. We will get you uh, caught up with your headlines. Coming up next.
Rascals, Tobin and Leroy here with you. Get some cat talk here, man. Brought to us. Oh, you got the new flavor there, Leroy? It's good, right? Yeah, I had some. I had. Yeah. I got two of them when I was trying them out. Remember, I told you it tastes yeah. like cream pickle. Yep. Yeah, I like the cream pickle. I haven't. See, I got. I got a, a drawer in my refrigerator mm -hmm. specifically for my energy and my Celsius. Tremendous. Um, my, um, I got Celsius, Redline, and Bang all in that little thing, all made by the same beautiful company. Yeah, yeah. man. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out when it's game time. Make Celsius a part of your play and get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of the Florida. That's another good. Panthers. You got the orange? Yeah, she does. The orange kind of makes you feel like a breakfast drink with a kick. This is my breakfast drink with a kick. Yeah. yeah. I got so, some orange for you. I've, try, I've, Panthers, tried them. I've tried them all. So the Panthers, fresh off their 7-1 to one win, was, were uh, celebrating a win over the Lightning. Great. But this was not without its controversy, okay? There was a fight in the arena between a Lightning fan and... My man, Victor E. Rat. Victor E. Rat. Second mascot that? to Stanley C. Panther. Here, here's the problem I have with this. I've seen this video. And I'm going to tell, yo, V, because we cool, right? Mm -hmm. V. Kick his ass. Don't sit there and <laughs> take it. Don't I don't know if that can shirt. happen, dude. I don't, don't know what the rules are as a mascot. Don't pull your shirt Oh, don't let him pull the shirt over it. Uppercut. Hockey fight. JP, can you can you roll the video here? We'll keep the sound Let's out. But can, you, can you roll the video here for our, our YouTube? We're streaming live on YouTube, Miami 56WQM and Twitch, same channel. Um, but can you roll the video here so we can see what happened to Victor E. Rat? Uh, because this is apparently, according to Andy Slater and others, uh, this is not staged. This is not staged. They are investigating it. But uh, this was not staged. They fight between the Bolts fan and the Panthers rat mascot. Let me be victory E rat for a second. All right, as you can see, the man is holding uh, victory. Like, what am I doing? I don't know. That, that that's the big oh, question. What are you doing? The guy who's handling. Apparently, uh, I, I've seen on Twitter. Apparently, that's not his typical handler. You know, every mascot has a handler, but he's getting put into a. A, a, almost a rear naked choke, and they're doing the hockey thing of pulling the He's jersey dead over dead. the head. It's giving them the business. This is not a joke. No, this is ridiculous, Look, dude. Hey, Why would they even hey, allow that? Why were they so hard? Exactly. What the hey, hell? I'm gonna tell you right now what's happening. Here's what happened. Right, dude came over, probably a little inebriated. Came over for some funny, some laughs, and ha ha some chuckles. And if you notice, first of all. This guy here, right with the, the with the mic, the handler, you, the handler. You can't handle victory right no more. Yeah, you're out <laughs> early. You, you're you're fired, you're actually. Done. You're this, done. This you guy, go, you go and skate with the people that 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 clean the ice. the ice. Yeah, clean go ice. scrape some ice, dude. But look at this lie. moment. At this moment right here, Vicky Rat, look at him and say, "Touch me one more time." Touch me, and I'll wow, shoot. Look, too late at this point. Look at him. Touch me one more time. I will say, dude. That guy right there, whoever that is. The audacity. I will say, that though. That guy needs uh, to be dealt with. I, I will say, JFA, can you bring up this other video of the, uh, we have another angle of Victor E. Rat getting his angle? ass. Yeah, we have another angle. Uh, Victor E. Rat getting, getting the business fed to him by this guy. <gasps> he could have fallen. He really could have. Wait, wait, wait. What did he have in his hand previously? That Look at this guy. <laughs> How is he getting away with it? Hand? I don't know, dude. I don't know why you're allowed to do that. Wait a minute. He, he trying to put he trying to put his damn shirt back on. It's obviously not staged because it's going on as the game is going on. Victory Rat is getting his ass kicked, and this dude has got the mic like he's doing a oh, concert. 
I am. What is right going now. on? The audacity of this man. Look at this. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so Andy Slater reports. He says Victor E. Rat would have to file a complaint with police before charges are pressed against this Lightning fan. A mascot source tells me, which is just a tremendous thing to tweet. Yeah, that is actually. <laughs> A mascot source tells me that Victor E. Rat's normal handler was off that night. The replacement didn't seem to intervene much, nor did the usher. Well, the usher. Yeah, what the hell? I mean, the usher's an old, uh, an older lady. I don't know if she's yeah. uh, gonna gonna have to like, you know. You know but what? Put you me in, coach. What? I have. Yeah. To Put me in. I have, look. Victor E. Rat is under new management. I am his handler. Wow. Oh, no. oh, 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 take it over. Let's go. go. Yeah. You don't mess with Victor E. Rat like that. What are we doing? My daughter loves yeah. Victor E. Rat. I think she loves him doing? more than Stanley C. Panther. Yes. Mm. Now, I'm telling you, for all, for Sophie, for all the kids out there that have taken beautiful pictures with Victor E. Rat, we can't have some clown. Trying to kick Vic. Well, nobody did Much anything. That's a lightning fan. Hey, buddy, yeah. instead of taking and taking video, this guy is a staple of South Florida hockey, and you just let him get his ass kicked. No fans jumped in to say, "Hey, player." I got to be honest. As a journalist, as a journalist, I feel like I have to document the rat getting his ass kicked. I'm boots on the ground. Well, it seems like you rats off a ship. I'm going to be boots on the ground in Tampa. Point four. Point hey. four. Hey. hey, this cannot happen. Listen. Mascots are there for our entertainment. Mascots They're have They're not feelings. there for your punching, to be your punching bag. Especially, first of all, this will never happen at a football game. You know why? Why? Because soon as somebody in a different uh, shirt, or a fan of another team came over to your mascot like that, it's go time. That's the thing that bothers me the most is it's a right. Lightning fan. And, and by the way, they're sneaky obnoxious. I really hate Lightning fans. You yeah. know? And, and Yeah. And, and I got to say, tit for tat. I think the Tobin and Leroy show needs to go kick the crap out of the Tampa Bay Lightning's mascot. Ooh. And we need to go eye for an eye. What is their mascot's name? Bolter? Like, what is their nickname? What? Who, who do we have to fight over this? All yeah. right. You're not going to push our secondary mascot around. Okay. <laughs> I'll back up. You hear me? You're not going to burn. Is that a bird? Because I'm going. Yeah. This is. Yeah. J Fig. She's ready yeah. to, to sharpen up her murderer chops. Yeah. Okay. It's a bug, though. But yeah. It's you know a bug. what? I don't yeah. even like bugs either. So oh, let's go. It's, it's game time. Oh, it's a lighter bug. Like it's a lightning a bug? Yeah, a thunder bug. Not even a lightning bug. Pfft, you ain't thunder a, even bug. a real mascot, dude. That's not even a real mascot. You would think that people catch him put in a jar. Yeah. yeah. Stupid mascot. I'm Stupid. So, I'm so fired up right so, now. So I can't believe. That Break his legs. Nobody did anything? Nobody did anything, dude. This oh, guy, dude. I think. I'm appalled at, at Panthers this, fans. That this, would not happen in Miami, I will say that. This mm. fan needs. He needs just give ninety seconds with him and Radko Gudis. Okay. Hold up. Hold up. He says he has wings. That's close enough for J Fig. <laughs> close enough. That is perfect. Okay. I am going. No one the victory right. Yeah, I'm. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. First of all, the handler. Bum. Come holla at me. We need to have a talk. Fire right. the bum guns at this guy, Marcos. Yes. This this this, this handler. Bum guns. This this handler needs to. So Horrible my question job. is, is if he wasn't gonna do nothing, he has access to other people. Yeah, can you I mean, can you say? Excuse me. Hey, uh, I don't quite know what to do. Uh, Victory Rat is getting his ass kicked. I need support. <laughs> I need support. Aisle seven support. Lower level. Nothing. He ain't even talking. No. Nope. He tried. His fix of the problem is trying to put Victory Rat's shirt back on. Todd, the intern needs to go. He's sorry. Impressed. Out. I'm you out. You're this. out. I mean, you have it, one job. Make it, sure nobody messes with Victory Rat. 
if not he if not fired, he needs to go to like Pantherland and start counting dolls or something like that. Like he yeah. needs Where to he, Stanley? he needs to work his way back up. Stanley, I don't know. They, they split sides. I wish Stanley saw Stanley that and got in the on middle the other of the side. Block. Ridiculous. That How are you gonna do better. that? Hey, wait. Let me tell you. Not for nothing. That would have been a much better video. And here's the caption. Guy gets ass kicked by Panther mascots. Right? Oh, if they That's jumped the- him? <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. I wish I was there. Wait, I'm so mad. Can I you imagine being there. that guy and going home, going back to Tampa and say, don't even talk to me. You got your ass kicked by a rat and, and, and another creature. Man. A uh, we got that, some more headlines here brought to you by terrible, the Palmetto man. Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. So the uh, the Heat, they're back in action tonight on the hardwood against the Indiana Pacers. 7.30 tip off. Kyle Lowry, he's out the next three games. We'll be reevaluated. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So, so here's, here's the deal. Um. Mm-hmm. Kyle Lowry is the only injury in the history of Heat basketball where they've already predetermined how long he's going to be out. Sort normally, of normally, wait, normally, correct me if I'm wrong. Secrets. He's close. Day to day, we're going to let it play out. He's getting close. He's almost back. He's getting better. You never hear a definitive time frame of when a guy's coming back. Kyle Lowry gets a definitive date. Not we will be reevaluated in a week. Not Kyle Lowry is going to miss the next three games. He'll be back. Which means something's up. And I'm not like I'm not that guy. But I'm telling you. That? I like something the way you is think, not man. right with this. Some ain't right with this. When have they ever, as long as we've been around the heat, had told you. How long to the day a guy's going to be out? How many games he's going to miss? Mm-hmm. They usually play it day by day, game by game. Not Kyle Lowry. Something's up. You heard it here first. Something is up. Yeah, you might not be wrong, dude. I love a good conspiracy. Speaking of, we'll get to a little bit more of it. 15 minutes of heat. It's next. Hey, yeah. Uh-
years of service to our community then now forever broward health 15 minutes eat here for you on 560 wqam before we get to that let's get a little weather here from leroy from the demesman and dover law firm your accident attorneys.com free consultations 24 7 call them at 866-954-MORE working over to the window flex yep partly cloudy Breeze looks like it's consistent between 10 and 15 miles an hour. Gusts a little bit higher. I see some trees struggling to stay afloat. Uh, and it looks like it's right around 80 degrees. Other than that, it's a pretty pleasant day. Beautiful. Heater back in action tonight, 730 from Miami-Dade Arena. I'll be boots on the ground tonight. Looking forward. Haven't been boots in a while. The boots uh, haven't been many home games, quite frankly. So... Looking forward to uh, being back in the building tonight and uh, seeing if he can get a win against the Indiana Pacers and see if they make any moves. There is a couple of things that have broken this hour, Leroy. I don't know how much of a story this one is, though. This feels like a bigger tweet than it is a story. What's that? uh, Woj tweets out a story that says, Lakers coach and Russell Westbrook had heated exchange. And he writes... Russell Westbrook and Darvin Ham had a brief heated verbal exchange in the locker room during halftime of Tuesday night's game against the Thunder. Ham expressed frustration with how Westbrook lingered on playing uh, playing the floor after being subbed out of the game late in the second quarter. Voices were raised, but then the discussion turned back to trying to win the game against the Thunder. Ham closed the game with Westbrook, who had 14 points of his, 14 of his 27 in the fourth quarter. Ham and Westbrook dapped up prior to leaving the arena later that night. Sports. Is that a story? What? No. What the hell just happened, dude? No. <laughs> Apparently we put it's a not a story. Wait. You can't tell the story. Get everybody worked up and just say they dapped each other up on the way out. That's like what I have the resolution already. Right. What are you doing? Here? They already fixed it. It happens. It well, happens. If, you, if you read it by tweets, he said it, it's. Uh, ESPN sources, Russell Westbrook and Darvin Ham had brief heat exchange in the locker room. Ham expressed frustration with Westbrook. Uh, and then the next tweet is, but they left the arena and dapped up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think like, you gotta... If you show me a coach that never gets after his players, and I'm gonna show you a soon-fired coach. Right? Think about it. Every coach that you've known that's had any success, you've had one of these tweets. If anything, uh, if anything, like he probably should have a talk with AD and maybe get into a heated exchange with him because he looked like a mope. He can't get in a heated conversation. He might break something. Dade South says he's reaching. I yeah. agree. Whoa, stirring it up. Uh, also, I have gotten this. The Ruffles NBA All-Star Celebrity Game rosters. The coaches, Ryan Smith, Jazz governor and honorary captain, and Dwayne Wade, NBA. Ch- they put NBA champion, Utah Jazz minority owner, and honorary captain. Team Ryan versus Team Dwayne in Salt Lake City. I don't, like, City. It? I don't like. I, I don't like it. I don't like. Why? It. I don't like it. I know. Like, good for him. It's a great business opportunity. But I don't. No, like it. Here's what it is. They wanted D Wade to be a part of it in some capacity. That's, of course, that's what that is. But I don't like it. Uh, you want to hear some of the players on the he team? He could have said no. He, oh, he's not going to say no. Okay, then he's a sweetheart. Then why? Why are you? I just don't like it. And it's why, a sensitive why day for me. Don't you like it though? I just I don't like I don't like him on the Jazz. I don't like him with Danny Ainge. I don't like it. I don't care for it. It's a Utah game. I don't like it. It's a U. I don't care for it. You just said no, you don't like you don't like that he's the coach. You don't you don't like the fact that he's with Utah. Exactly. So you gotta clarify that. Oh you made, I thought that was clear. I, I immediately thought that you didn't like the fact that he was an honorary coach. I don't like that he's there as in the jazz hub. It hurts my okay, feelings. Okay, well say that. Don't use the the all-star game to you do know you want, do you want to hear some of the participants? Kane Brown. Nikki I'm Jam. Surprised, I'm surprised Jimmy Butler don't want to go. Uh, maybe he didn't know. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
Calvin Johnson, Megatron. DK Metcalf. Who is a young Megatron. The Miz. Ooh. Albert Pujols, friend of Skip Schumacher. Hold on. Time off. Let's. All bets are off now. Okay. He can barely stand in one spot and swing a bat. Dude. He is going to run around and play basketball? I don't know what he looks like now. I'm big as hell. I, you don't know that? He ain't never been petite. He's in the game. Celebrity. Wait a minute. <laughs> Speaking of Skip Schumacher, if you guys missed him, we're going to bring that to you in about five minutes. Uh, oh, he, was, he was awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. We love him. Let me tell you. Probably, I would say next to Mike McDaniel, he, like, it's good having young young coaches in 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 the in those positions. Like it. Spo, also, young guy when he took over. Also in the game, Leroy's favorite, 21 Savage. 21. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, how many points do you think he's going to have? Wait, Marcos, yeah. am, I, am I overstating this? Every song that he's in, 21. his first words are 21. And yeah, just in case you didn't know who it was. <laughs> and then uh he don't even say savage, he just say 21. Also, monster and heat he, fan. He's got about a whole album with Drake, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah. Future didn't like that. Monster Heat fan. Ozuna is in the game. Mm. I hope he goes up to D Way and be like, what can we do to make this stop? <laughs> <laughs> why? why? Dude, yo, baby skip. Why? I don't like you calling me that. Every What's your Single situation that goes on in sports, you have some kind of twist to where you feel jilted, angered, disrespected. And this we're talking about all star game in Utah. I understand. And I never want to make it feel like I'm mad at Dwayne Wade because I'm not. I just don't like it. All right. Okay. The fact that you taking that approach is why I gotta call you baby skip. I don't want you to call me that, though. I'm not. Yeah, don't be Baby Skip. No. I'm not Baby Skip. I, I, I appreciate LeBron's greatness. I just no, would have. We're not talking about LeBron right now. Well, we're I know this is petty. where this all comes now from. Now your petty has just flowed over, and now an innocent bystander in D. Wade is taking some heat. I just wish everybody re realized who Dwayne Wade was last night. Everybody realized that LeBron played uh, four years with him, you know, good friend, and if by by all accounts of the he commercials, I know, there. I know, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knew who he was. Like he wasn't just there, cause like they did play together, so you wouldn't know it by the highlights that went out. You would think it was like, uh, uh, oh, well, you guys, what you guys playing an all star game together, Dwayne? No, we played in two championships, two championship teams. I'm sitting next to Richard Jefferson. Could you imagine? You got a role player next to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I I meant I meant I did not mean to bring like back Richard up. Jefferson. We were this. talking about an All Star game in Utah, and we're back. Richard Jefferson <laughs> like tried to make a funny video about oh you know LeBron should be thanking us, Dwayne, for carrying him. You know, and I'm like, no, no, only you can make that joke, Richard Jefferson. I actually. <laughs> I actually wait, like contributed wait. to my championships. Dude, you're even petty about the funny. You're uh, even petty about Richard Jefferson trying to be funny. Uh, I didn't like it. You know, don't Dude. don't put yourself in the same category as Dwayne Wade. You're not. You know, you. You think he thinks he's in the same? Uh, I think he does. I think he does. I think he no, does. He I don't. I, I don't Dude, care for it. No, he does not. D Wade is a Hall of Famer. Richard Jefferson is not. Stop it. He don't think that. Well, you can't think that. I hope you're right. Come I don't on. know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That being said, uh, you know, we'll, we'll cheer things up. A man who is a delight. We learned he's a delight today, yeah. and now follows me on Twitter. Skip that, Schumacher. What? I mean, why? Why? I, mean, dude, I, I love the fact that we will get a tweet or a text from anybody famous. Hey, look who followed me back. That's right. <laughs> Gogi was the best, though. Oh, <laughs> the dragon that blew up in your face. That hurt. It did. It did. And Gogi's always just checking in on the weekend. Hey, what are the Tobins up to? 
<laughs> ah, those rascals. They're at Peanut Island again, daddy. <laughs> Can you stop? I will stop. Skip Schumacher joins us next.
Tobin and Leroy here with you on 560 WQAM. Very excited. Going to talk to Mullins manager Skip Schumacher here in just a minute. Give you some quick headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super. To the Toyota of Hollywood guest line. Shop over 1,500 Toyotas indoors in one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. He is the new manager of your Miami Marlins who have their fan fest coming up on Saturday at Lone Depot Park. So go check that out. We talked to Jeff Cohen on yesterday. He's got some big announcements. He wouldn't tell us, Leroy. He wouldn't crack yesterday with his big announcement. You know, I was I was disappointed that we yeah. couldn't get that out of Mr. Mo- yeah, I thought we could I thought we could crack him. I thought we could crack him. I mean, he said he didn't know. He didn't know. Yeah, he knows. He knows. Uh Skip <laughs> Schumacher joining us here on the show. Uh Skip, thanks so much for the time. Do you know Jeff Conine's big announcement, Skip? Uh, can we get it out of you? I have an idea what it's about, but you're not gonna get it out of me either. Coming out well, uh Skip, first of all, congratulations on on getting the job. This off season and uh, it, like, were did you, when you get went to this process, were you nervous? Did you think you had a chance this was going to be the the cycle? You're very young, uh, one of the youngest managers in baseball. Like, did you think like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it this time around? I'm definitely gonna nail a manager job. You know, you really have no idea what's going to happen in these interviews. Um, I've had a couple of them before in the last few uh, seasons, 2019, 20, and 21. Um, but you don't know how they're going to go. And the other ones, I think, really prepared me for this one. And to be honest with you, I'm, I don't know if I would have been ready for the other managerial positions because I was a first base coach when I got those interviews. And I needed to be in that bench coach position to see and really navigate a game and understand how the game is run from this side. And um, I'm glad I got that seat before, uh, before I got this job. Now, Skip, this is an a old person's job. Uh, like <laughs> I'm so used to seeing, you know, managers so much older. How with you being a lot younger, is this going to kind of help this team? Because there's a lot of young players and a lot of guys that need to learn, you know, basically how to play the game and what needs to go into it. Well, I think it's, it's all about relationships. I think, you know, Brian Snicker's not young, and he's uh, he's a really good manager, right? right. Um, and then you have Ollie Marmol, who I uh, was a bench coach with last year in St. Louis, who is, I think, the youngest manager in the big mm-hmm. league. And we won 90-plus games and, uh, you know, had a really good season with an MVP on our roster. So I think you can uh, win with any age manager. I think it just boils down to the re- relationships and managing egos. And can you do both? And um, so I think a big part of what I uh, in my success as a player and watching, you know, the managers go through, um, you know, winning seasons and losing seasons. One had the relationships, one lost the clubhouse. And I think uh, my focus right away from day one is, is building those relationships and and trying to get the most out of the player every single day. So, uh, Skip, how surprised were you that uh, a guy like Jazz Chisholm came to you? and suggested his move to center field. Cause when we were speaking with Niner yesterday, he said, that's not very common. A lot of times, you know, managers or front office have to go convince players to do that. Um, like, so when that, when he broached you with that idea, you know, what, like what went through your head when your, your young stars coming to you and saying, he's going to do something that's, you know, best for the team. Yeah, it was pretty cool because that was before the Rojas trade. That was before the Arias trade. That was just, Hey, if you need me, I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do to help us win. Um, And when you have your best player willing to do anything to help the team win on every, every given day, any given day, you're in a really good spot. It makes this seat a lot easier and a less, less hot um, because you just, you don't have to convince uh, your best guy to do something he's uncomfortable with. Now playing center field, is it going to be really easy on him right away? I'm not sure. He's an elite athlete. Um, luckily, we have an extended spring training with the WBC going on that we can get, you know, really good work in. Um, but the, the fact that he had his, his mind wrapped around that already before we even made these trades was huge. And um, it's a credit to Jazz. You know, he's ready to win. He's sick of losing. And um, and I think he's uh, he's going to be really good, uh, a really good center fielder and and hopefully an all star for years to come. As one of your best players, does that not help? 
how you can approach other guys because you have your best player willing to do whatever it takes. Now you can go to a guy, say a younger guy and say, Hey, why don't you try this out? Or why don't you try this out? And look, jazz is doing whatever he can to win. We need everybody to be on that same page. Yeah. I mean, that's really how you start, you know, setting a culture. Right. Um, right. And, you know, when you have your best player and, and, and Sandy and jazz doing whatever it takes to win, wants the ball in all nine innings in Sandy and, and Jazz was willing to play, even though he made an all-star uh, team the year before at second base and would probably do it again um, at second base. He's willing to to be uncomfortable and for our team uh, to, to help, you know, move the needle. I mean, how could you not love that? And, mm -hmm. yes, you're absolutely right. It helps conversations down the road when, hey, listen, uh, you know, our best player was willing to move off of his position to help us win some games. Um, I think you can do it too. And, by the way, not everybody can do this. Um, right. I do believe that defense is one of the tools, the easier tool to get better at. It just takes makeup and hard work. If you don't have those two genes, it's not going to work out. Not everybody can just move positions. Jazz has that trait. You ask anybody around here, can, is he a worker? This guy works. And so that's why there's no doubt in my mind, wherever Jazz goes, he's going to be lead at. I'm sure you're thrilled you don't have to face him anymore uh, in Sandy Alcantara. You mentioned him. I'm, I'm fascinated by this, Skip. We've seen with Sandy, as you mentioned, he likes to go not all nine innings. And if he's not allowed to, we have seen him with Don Mattingly in the past. Let it be known he's not happy about coming out. How do you balance that, man? This guy is a horse. He is one of the best players. And he seems to really hate being taken out of games. Have you already had those talks with him? Do you feel like that's something that's going to come along with the season of, of knowing, hey, when is the right time? To, to, to ride a guy like Sandy Alcantara and one of the time to, to say, hey, we don't need you to, to, to carry the load all the way. Like, how, how do you think that relationship is, is uh, going to build throughout this year? Yeah, I think there's a, double, a couple factors that go into that. You know, the, what's the score of the game? You know, there's different factors that obviously that, uh, you know, I'm not going to ride him when it's eight to one. Um, and, you know, trying to get and he's at 100 pitches already and you're, you're saving him down the, the line. But I will tell you that I want all five pitchers trying to go nine innings. That's the goal, right, to eat up innings, to save our bullpen. That is the goal, quick outs. Um, Sandy's a horse. I want him to be pissed off when I take the ball. I want Lizardo to be pissed off and Rodgers to be pissed off and whoever else, Cueto to be pissed off. Um, I played with Johnny Cueto in 2014 and 15. He's not happy coming out of the game either. Great. That's what I want. Um, Wainwright last year, not happy. Miles, M Michael is not happy. That's the culture you want. You want these guys to be on the mound, the biggest spots. They let them control the game and say, this game is mine. I don't want it to give it. I don't want it to give it to anybody else. However, when I do take the ball and give it to somebody else, now they're the biggest cheerleader for that guy who's on the mound. So I think it's a fine line uh, as far as that's good, but you want that competitor. I want that guy on the mound and, and Sandy, it's going to be tough to take the ball out of his hands at any time. Um, in fact, I remember after that, I think it was in Philly, um, we played them uh, in St. Louis a couple of weeks later. And Donnie went out in the ninth inning with guys on first and second in a 4-3 game. And he let him go. And then he got a double play ball uh, to end the game, a complete game in St. Louis. Um, so, listen, you just you don't know where he's at physically when, you know, when Donnie did that. Um, I had Donnie great manager. I loved him every, you know, every moment I had with him, but I think you watch the game and you understand the player before you make any moves. Are those some of the moments during like the course of a season where your relationship grows with your players is that you get a good feel of things like that and you make the right decisions as far as when to take them out, when to leave them in and everybody else either on that staff or on the field says, Hey, you know what? This guy, this guy knows what he's doing. Um, yeah. yeah, the play. I mean, the, you're throughout the season. You start trusting the player more, the player less, right? That's right. just how it works. They earn your trust. Can I trust him three and four times through the lineup? And then you have conversations with your pitching staff, um, your bench coach, and then you watch with your eyes. There's always pregame meetings and like, okay, if Sandy gives us six innings, who do we go to? Well, Sandy might take us to seventh and eighth, and then you just watch it and you see how he's throwing the ball and see the crispness of his ball and whoever that is on the mound. Um, so I think you always have a game plan, but the beauty about this game is it's never scripted, right? Very rarely does it go exactly how you think it's going to go in your pregame meetings. 
I think you're prepared for it to go a certain way, but you always are hopeful that, you know, they, they exceed your expectations. We're talking to Skip Schumacher, New Marlins manager, Marlins Fan Fest coming up this Saturday at Lone Depot Park. We're looking forward to being out there for spring training in Jupiter coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, Skip, I want to ask you about this. Uh, so you have a great video of an argument you've gotten into with an umpire as a bench coach when you were with San Diego. It was actually against the Marlins. How much are you looking forward to uh, your first managerial umpire argument? And what is the thing that will set you off the most of these umpires that can be very sensitive? Yeah, you know, that was my first career ejection as a player. <laughs> as a and two years later, here I am uh, as, the, as the manager for the Marlins. So, uh, you know, honestly, I've known Doug Eddings for a long time. He was the, 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 um, the umpire behind the plate that night. And I, just, I had enough. And I couldn't take it anymore. Um, and I think, um, you know, when you got to defend your players, the players have to know that you have their back. That's number one. As soon as you don't, the players don't feel that you've lost them. And by the way, you've lost them forever, right? It's not just right. that night. As soon as they sense that you don't have their back, you're done. And um, I can tell you that I will have their back um, at all times. Um, Cause I always felt that as a player with every single manager I had, um, which is a testament to those guys, starting with Tony La Russa. Um, so I think, um, I, am I looking forward to it? My family's not looking forward to it, uh, that's for sure. Um, but I know it's going to happen. Um, I'm not going to give you an over or under of like how many times I'm going to get tossed, but I do have a hair trigger, unfortunately. And uh, But I think with all these new rules and everything, it, there, there's a lot less of the ejections than there used to be. Um, so I, I, I don't think it's as many times as a lot of people think. So no stealing a base. Like you're not going to steal a base or maybe throw a, rock, <laughs> throw a hey, rock bag like throw, a grenade. Don't don't a base. I don't know. I don't know if I can lift and they're a lot bigger than they used to be. Like, what, yeah, no, I don't know if I can do that anymore. Now, I, most of the time when managers get kicked or, or get ejected, it's because a player is getting ready to get ejected and they go ahead on and take and, and jump on that hand grenade for them. Uh, that's mostly where that goes, right? It, it's more of protecting your player from him getting ejected, you go ahead on and take the L4. Yeah, you're trying to save the player. You never want to get, um, you know, I don't want to get Segura kicked. I don't want him out of the game. I'd rather be right. out of the game or my bench coach or my pitching coach out of the game and not Sandy or Segura or Jazz, right? I mean, you're, you're definitely always protecting the player. But, again, that goes back to having their back and jumping in before, you know, stuff hits the fan. And I think that's that's going to be, a, you know, a big part of a rookie manager is knowing – that cl that clubhouse has to know that I have their back and um, and and always going to protect them, you know, at any given time. Uh, how have you uh, been practicing the the first day of spring training speech? How's that going for you? <laughs> um, I, I think you know my twenty plus years of you know listening to speeches given by some Hall of Fame managers. I don't remember too much of them, um, which you know, which makes me a lot more comfortable because unless you really screw it up. A lot of those guys are just like, all right, get this thing over with. I want to get on the field. Let's start no playing some baseball, right? right? And yeah. uh, so I'm not overthinking it. Uh, it's just going to be a couple quick hitters and I'm done. Are you – like, do you uh, – with Skip, being a young manager, but you've crossed eras. Like, you've seen, like, how – young players probably consume the game like jazz is a very active guy on social media he will uh, let himself if he is happy about something or upset about something it'll be out there on social media how do you think you're going to navigate that like the idea of you know guys are engaged all the time on their phones and things like that how have you noticed that that change with players you know not to make you know not your years through the game yeah, I think players uh, nowadays um, are trying to build their brand, right? I mean, I think there's life outside of baseball, and that's okay, too, because um, you get to let the fans know who you are as a person, and you're not just a baseball player. Um, you have a, you're, a, you're a human being. You have a personality, and, um, you know, if you want to, you know, say some stuff on social media, you have to also understand there's some repercussions. Um, you know, how's that going to affect us as a team? How's that going to affect teammates? Um, you know, personal relationships. So, um, and that's not jazz. That's, that's everybody in the league and, and every sport. Um, so that's the stuff, you know, before you hit send is, is, is it going to affect our team, our organization? Because you, honestly, you want to eliminate distractions and BS, right? You just don't want to have any distractions. If we're really in it to win every single day, then you have to eliminate the distractions. Um, so I think there's probably some, a lot of these young kids are some learning curve and some growing up. 
um, to do in our gener uh, this new generation. My son's 15 years old. He's on social media. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of like talks about social media and what that can do and affect not only your life forever, um, but, you know, to your team and your school and whatever that means. So um, I think as long as it doesn't have it, uh, there's no distractions inside of our clubhouse, you know, I got no issues with it. A couple more before we get you out of here. A couple quick hitters here. Skip, Skip Schumacher, New Marlins manager. Get out to Fan Fest this Saturday, guys. Starts at 1 o'clock at Lone Depot Park. They got a lot of fun stuff. Jeff Conine, big announcement. No one will tell us. A lot. Skip Schumacher's a lockbox. He won't tell us. <laughs> so it must be something good coming out. Uh, what is the weirdest thing Skip Schumacher has done to get out of a slump? <laughs> I'm not sure if I can say that on here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was very superstitious. Um, I did all kinds of different things. Um, as a player, if you saw my, you know, batting routine, um, you know, I had to like do my certain my batting gloves a certain way and line them up the Velcro exactly, you know, in line, if it was crooked at all, I should readjust. I don't think that the pace of play right now would not go well with me. Um, I do have a strike called quite often. Um, but I, I do think that, um, some of the pregame, uh, rituals just changed, uh, honestly. And, um, but I, I like as far as like the weirdest, strangest thing I've ever done, um, <laughs> I would have to get gas if I got a hit and I got gas out. I'd have to stop at 55 or I wouldn't stop the gas if I if I started getting hits. Yeah. So I'd have to go to the gas tank and go, you know, 20, 55, I'd have to stop at 55 and then, and then go to the field. So there's some weird stuff. I'd, but yeah, I'd do anything for hits. You know what I mean? I mean, it's such a long season it's understandable <laughs> i used i used to have stuff like that but then i put my mouthpiece in and got hit and then forgot about it <laughs> there you go and yep. uh what is the uh what is the favored uh dugout snack what are you what are you tearing through as a game is going on are you gum guy are you a seeds guy what, what is uh what is uh you consuming as the game going up goes on coffee really? yeah oh yeah i love coffee um i like just just black coffee, man. Like I just crush it all day long, all night. Um, yeah. And I can go right to bed. It's not a great thing. Um, but I love the taste of it. And yeah, the seeds like make a mess. I'll mix in some gum because my breath starts stinking. Right. Like I don't want my bench coach thinking, you know, starting moving away. Um, but so like gum and coffee are the, like the, the two things that I'll, I'll have during the game. Have you been introduced to the Cuban coffee down here? Have people giving you that rocket fuel yet? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I played in Venezuela in winter ball for three months. And then I played for Team USA in Cuba. Um, oh. So uh, I'm very aware of the Cuban coffee. And Did a you make the mistake that I did and they give you the little cafecito cup and you're like, no, Phil, give me the big one. What are you doing? Thank God, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a mistake, Leroy. Yeah, because there is like, so much sugar in that. And you are you are ready to roll. There's, there's a crashing element to that. Yeah. Too. Uh, so I had to take another one uh, after my first one in like the seventh inning. So it gets you going, but then you got to keep going. You can't stop. Yeah. Uh, Skip, so thanks so much for the time. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank Congratulations. You. We're looking forward to spring training and uh, go check out the Marlins this weekend. Fan Fest is Saturday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. A lot of meet and greets, a lot of interactive games, some behind the scenes tours. And, uh, you know, Skip Schumacher sounds like we're in good hands, man. Good luck this year. Yeah, you guys were great. Thanks for having me on. Thanks. Yeah.